listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. You're going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. All right. We got a great episode today of the bomb hole presented by Pub Beer. First things first, we got to start off. Stunny Buds, how are you doing? So good, my dog. Ooh, very articulate Thank one you. today. <laughs> yeah. To my left, we got Gabe Ferguson, aka G Ferg, in the booth. Gabe, how are you doing? Just chilling, greased up. He's lubed up, he's greased up. Happy to be here. All right, uh, before we get into it, I'm going to let you guys know who Gabe is. A little uh, book report, if you will. Probably going to be a little uncomfortable for G Ferg. Here we go. Gabe was a childhood prodigy. He did his first 720 at age 7. He came up in the contest scene riding icy half pipes, known for having great style. He competed in X Games at 15. I didn't fact check that. Is that right? I think that's right. I don't know. It all blends together, you know? <laughs> okay. He has since transitioned into backcountry, filming video parts and competing in natural selection. His riding isn't loud and in your face, but rather subtle and stylish. If you know what's up, you know G Ferg is one of the best. Now let's get into it. Gabe? What do you want to know? <laughs> 720 at 7? 720 at 7. 720 at 7, yep. I, uh, I think I was good trying like a... Good right there. Really good stat. I think I was trying like a front five, and it just kind of happened on accident. Just happened. Mm-hmm. And then I heard from your brother, uh, Freddie Kilbermonton-esque front nine at age nine. Uh, that's, that's nice. I'll take that for sure. Um, but yeah. I always thought that, like, when I was growing up, when I was young, I was like, all right, did 540 this year, did a 7 this year, like, next year we're going 9. Like, always, at, when I was young, I was like, gotta add the 180 every year. What year did it stop at? 12, you did a 12, or? Dude, it stopped at, like, yeah, it's, I did a, did a, my only back 12 I've ever done on the jump, I was 14, mm. at a rock star camp. So I feel like you were one of the original babies on board. Like, what, when did you first start strapping in? I mean, dude, yeah, so long ago. I skied when I was three. Whole family snowboarded, though. Like, mom and dad ripped. Two older brothers ripped. So, like, I I wanted to get on the board. So, got on the board when I was four. And I remember so many days breaking bindings, just riding down the hill on my dad's shoulder, like, so young. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just what the older bros were doing and the family was doing. So, just followed them, kind of. Now, since you're the youngest, do you have what I like to call younger brother syndrome with a bunch of pent up angst? Yeah, there's definitely pent up angst. It was always like follow the bros, try to do what they do. Maybe try to, it was always nice to try to beat them or something. But I do have the worst little brother syndrome of like you get beat up and you, you're the smallest guy and you just get beat up kind of. And then you learn how to say like really mean things. Which is almost worse. Like I'm, I could never beat up my brothers, but I could just like break them down, like say some really mean shit. So that sucks. So I definitely had some <laughs> younger brothers. So shit that, like that sucks. So he knows yeah. how to cut deep, but know he knows how, how to cut, cut deep. deep. Yeah, dude. and it hits hard. Like I'll, they'll piss me off, and I'll just say some shit, and I'm like, God, why did I say that? Like, <laughs> and they're they're crying in the yeah, corner, and you can tell you just really hurt their feelings. I'm like, that's terrible. And it's way worse than getting beat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I guess that's some heavy younger brother well, syndrome. Ben, uh, ben was saying that, you know, he's like, you know, we used to walk by Gabe when he was a kid and just give him a little bop every time we saw him. Oh, yeah. You you peek out of the room down the hallway. Make sure the bros aren't in there when you're trying to go to the bathroom. Because <laughs> def, definite dead arm, like, every time. Yeah. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. So what about, so there's beef Ben Ferguson, which is uh, is the oldest? Yeah, Ben's oldest. And then Zach, we're all two years apart. Then Zach, then me. And yeah, all mad close. What's up oh. with Zferg? He doesn't yeah. get the shine. Dude, he's, he has a big build. I've heard, right? Like football player type. Yeah, he's a beast athlete, smartest dude. Like, just got done with or done with college. Did a bunch of biology stuff. Smartest dude. Like, plays rugby right now. And yeah, he's just a badass. Good at boarding too. Call him Big Z. You have ever seen Surfs Up? That cartoon. The homie like turns around and like bows to the wave. We we're at Baldface and Big Z was doing that shit. He'd like do a dope <laughs> slash and then like turn around and like bow to the slope. It was always so sick. <laughs> and your pops is Boise State football head, right? Pure yeah, athlete. Pop- wow. Pops is just athlete. Grew up doing school sports, wrestling, football. And then I think uh, around the time he was going to Boise, he had a homie uh, and they would always go to McCall and he kind of got him into like action sports, kayaking, rock climbing and stuff. 
So then he just like from there on. And when I would go skate when I was young, we'd go to that McCall skate park and I would skate with his like OG friend Jeremy from college. Super mm -hmm. dope. Dope. So you guys started doing contests at a super young age. How was it competing at a young age? What did that look like? Competing at a young age was sick because we were we were just traveling around a lot, doing like all the contests. Do the USA essays. There's Burton demo kind of contest things. Um yeah, and this was like pre rev tours for me. I was so young. But like so many contests. I don't know. I think you talked about it on Ben's thing. We had this Burton contract where you could win 500 bucks. So it was like we were just running those up. And if you won pipe and slope style, you get a quick G bone. It's just like what you age? both had this contract. What age? Yeah, I don't know. I was mad young. I was like, this is like 9, 10, 11. Kids signing Connie's at age nine. Wow. Actually, parental guardians yeah. signing. B Ferg, mm -hmm. the original, Brandon, not, oh, yeah. not Ben. That's impressive. Yeah, no, super fortunate, just like crazy fortunate. So nine years that. old, you're cashing checks. Nine years, yeah, we, we've we been, yeah, cashing checks, I guess, a little bit. I don't know. What do you do with the check when you're nine for 500 bucks? I think this was going straight into our funding for like gas and food on trips mainly. Cause not sitting in some like college account that you never went to or. Yeah, definitely not in a college account that I never <laughs> went to. That's for sure. But no, I think we were kind of like. Getting money and then like that would help us pay for hotels, food and stuff. Getting like going around because my parents did like, they just sacrificed and traveled so much and were spending cash like for sure. Mm. I mean, well, I happen to have a guest question from your pops, B Ferg, Brandon Ferguson, the original B Ferg. Here we go. Hey Chris and buds, hope all is well. What's up, Gabe? How's it going? I miss you. Hope things are going good in Utah. Hey, pretty simple question. Just wondering if, as you were coming up, growing up at our house, if you feel like we pushed you too hard. All right, I'll let you answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, epic. Miss you too, Dad. Love you so much. Um, parent, my dad was definitely scary. Like, scary as fuck. I would go on trips, and I'd probably goof off, but then when my dad would fly in, it was like, all right, it's go time. Like, homie's here, you got to show him what you got or else he'll be like we're flying home like what are we even doing here you know but uh i mean i think he pushed us really hard and he definitely put a lot of pressure on us but i think it kind of worked and it got us to where we were like i wouldn't change anything there was definitely times where i was he was just scary he, like wanted to prove to him more than anyone else that you were like trying to ride or like trying your best you know because he just grew up like college athlete he's like you work hard if you work harder than this person, you can probably beat this person. So it's just like when he shows up, you work hard. And but then, when he left, you are back to antics? Yeah, you know, I was pretty good at like, <laughs> yeah, oh, he's here. I got to show up. And then when he's gone, yeah, I'll probably fuck off a little bit. But Did, did you ever get sent home? Never got sent home. Um, no, never got sent would home. He, would he make you be like, all right, got to hit the big side of the jump? Or oh, let's, yeah. Let's see a big, bigger spin. So like, you're, hitting the, you're hitting small side. He's like, you got to go big side. Oh, yeah. I got to store like a one of a contest at usasa at bachelor and i like i ate shit in practice dude i was young did an indie nose bone and just did the like drift 90 back edge catch like blew my helmet up and then i just came to the contest my dad's like all right buddy just hit the big side straight air it you got this like and i was already out of it probably didn't even want to do the contest and i fully just like knuckled and then like bounced forward and broke my collarbone no so just had like a brutal ass day but like i don't know like Shit like that happens. Well, it worked out. Look at the kid. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. The fundamentals are yeah, through the roof. Fundamentals. I got a Patreon question. Yeah. You're cruising around with your brother all the time. And this Who's leads, it from? This is from Tahoe Roger. Tahoe Roger. And Tahoe Roger <laughs> says, How much of your skill on the board do you attribute to your brother? Were you and Ben competitive back in the day when you were going through the contest scene or helpful to one another? Um, always, he was always super helpful to me cause he was always like in the shit before me and just older. So he would like help me out, tell me what I should do. I'd ride with him basically all the practice and stuff. It was honestly, I think we had like a huge upper hand having a homie who's actually like looking out for you that much at the contest. Cause like you do have all your boys there, but at the end of the day, you want to beat all your boys. Like but, like, if you have your bro, your bro is just, like, looking out for you, and I'm looking out for him. I could barely watch him when he would do runs. Like, it, like you're so nervous for him, you know. But I think it was always just good. Were you guys in the same, um, like, age groups and everything? 
No, when we were younger, we were in different age groups. He was older for sure. Um, but then, like, yeah, I don't know. When it, when we were doing, like, Rev Tours and then, like, Grand Prix stuff. Then you were at the same. Then we were just on the same shit, yeah. yeah. Did you grow up uh, under the James Jackson good fundamental coaching? Definitely rode with James a bunch. Um, yeah, with him, we did MBSEF forever, and it was, like, awesome. And then for a bit, we just stopped doing it because I think it was expensive for three kids, for my, our parents. And then... What's N- NB... MBSEF, Mount Bachelor Sports Education Foundation. Wow. Kind of a tongue Mouthful. twister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did that We did that forever, and all <laughs> Sorry, those coaches were the shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then we just stopped doing it. I think it was too spendy. Or, like, parents were just getting overpaying for it, three kids. He started riding with James. <clears throat> when we would ride with James, we'd just kind of go ride the mountain. Honestly, we'd just, like, watch James try to hit a big jump, kind of, <laughs> which was always kind of funny, like. Yeah, we'll go ride with James, and it's just him trying to hit this fat wind lip, just kind of show off, I think, but pretty sick. And he was getting paid? Uh, I think our parents were paying him a little bit, for sure. That's actually a good, instead of putting a bunch of money into that other thing, just go send him out with a big dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smart. You know, it's interesting, talking to your dad uh, this morning before we did this show, he was saying how, you know, we had Brian on, Brian Fox, he's anti-energy drink guy. And you guys uh, had support from a pretty young age from energy drinks, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I got on Rockstar when I was 14. Like, they've been hooking it up forever. Mm-hmm. Dopest. And yeah. he, he made a good point about, like, them helping you f- be able to do what you do when, when parents can't kind of thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, because I definitely, I left Burton for Volcom and then got fired from Volcom. So for, like, two or three years, it was just kind of floating. But Rockstar like stuck by and like hooked it up and when you do stop doing contests and you're like all right i gotta get a truck and a sled and you just spend money all year like they're definitely like the only reason i could afford for a while to just like do this shit so like oh i'm everything kind of 10 years deep almost 10 years i think yeah that's incredible Mm -hmm. how old are you 23 Woo! good age good age michael jordan and michael jordan year how is being 23 it's kind of it's kind of fucked up right now. The world's a strange <laughs> place out there. It is strange. What's yeah. so strange for you about it? I don't know. Technology's <laughs> getting crazy. A lot of people out there. Everyone's stressing. I'm kind of hoping. So you know, metaverse. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that shit. This is probably kind of crazy to say. Hopefully that pops off. So then most of the crazy people are just in the metaverse. And then you're just cruising out there. There's less people around, you know? That's a good thought. You're in the real world. They're in the metaverse. Everyone yeah. else is hanging out, buying real estate off of Snoop Dogg. Yeah, but in, I'm in actually the metaverse. Just, I'm just breathing the air still. Mm-hmm. And you're there. just out there with your boys. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'd be out there. I'm just just NFT, just copping paintings for my metaverse yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seen Chris lately? Yeah, he's still in his house, just hooked up to the metaverse. <laughs> he's just locked up, yeah. <laughs> just spedded bisque. <laughs> just bisque. But yeah, it's bought a new bought a new house in the metaverse today. So I don't understand how any of that works. But it's it's actually not that far off with yeah, Instagram that's what's and, crazy and the internet and mm-hmm. staring into these little boxes in our pocket. Pocket box. Good stuff. All right, I got a hard hitting question. King of Bachelor. King of Bachelor. Uh Curtis Cezik. Wow. Woo. Let's give him an air horn. Why is Curtis the bat the king? Because he's just kind of the shit. All around, he's just kind of the shit. Best to hang out with. Best mm. to board with. Yeah. Mm. I just like his lifestyle, the way he goes about. Love, love his board and dumping buckets out there. You feel He's almost like the underdog, too, of the king. Because everybody says Dirksen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everyone says Dirksen. I mean, Dirksen is probably the king. But I'm just going full. He's going people's champ. What appeals champ, to you. People's champ, yeah. I mean, you go out with him, and it's just a good time. He has a good, good aura about him, you know? Yeah, you go sledding with him, and you're, like, scared. But then you're also just laughing because he's saying funny shit the whole time. Yeah, and he's always smiling, laughing. Yeah. and It's perfect. All right, we got a guest question from not the king of Bachelor, <laughs> Ben Ferguson, your brother. Here we go. What's up, Bomb Hall? Chris, Ethan. How are you guys? Gabe? Yeah. Uh, I was wondering. I mean, don't name them all because it would take forever. But what are a couple of reasons why Oregon is better than Utah? Thanks, guys. Enjoy the chat. Later. Just a couple of reasons why Oregon's better than Utah. Thanks, Ben. Miss you too. Um. Well, 
our lakes aren't fully our lakes aren't toxic drying up. We got that. But, but we're just getting watered like crazy right now. Uh, that thing's gonna be greased um, up. I don't know. It seems like there's some heavy salt lake bend beef going these yeah, days. Yeah, what's the deal? What's up with the what's going you on? You guys like to talk a lot of a lot of bad about us, but I always see here. I thought you lived here actually if you want to know the truth. <laughs> I, I like having all the homies here to, for the visit. And it is the shit in the winter, but I mean, you can't beat Oregon. You got the coast. It's perfect. It's Mountains. Perfect. Yeah, forest. No, what don't, don't you like about Salt Lake? The Utah Jazz. <laughs> You're going to go there right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right to the jazz beef. Well, go Blazers. You see that game the other night? Blazers got him. Yeah, but have you been down to a jazz game and just sat, sat there and, and, and rooted on your team? It's the best. The uh, locals get so bummed. No, never been to. You need uh, to go do that. It's a great, great time. Yeah, I'd be down. I do feel like Ben's on a pretty good tear right now, though. Who do you guys got? You guys got Mason Jar? We got Mason Jar, Jer, um, Ben, Kurt, Austin are still thriving out there. Thriving. Price is holding it down. Eels is there. Um... Drew Brownrigg is actually the king of Bachelor, low key, low key king, low key king. What about? I, I hear you not mentioning Spencer Schubert. Is that an anti steal? Are you on an anti steal yeah, like, campaign? You guys have like since you pulled him. He's not part of the crew. He's not anymore? part of the powder elitist. Yeah. He's no. not part of the powder elitist squad. <laughs> no, we're holding. on. I like to think we're holding on to Spenny. He's all we got for our. He's what you got. Yeah, I'm claiming. No, nah, he's still banned. Yeah. See, I see Carson all the time, so it's like. He's why is there. why not why didn't none of you guys fuck with the steel over in Bend? Dude, I don't fuck with the steel because it's just really scary. Like <laughs> I'm just scared to like hit my face or teeth on it. Really. See, I think it's a I think it's more of a powder elitist thing. That's, that's what I think. They don't really have a lot of steel out there in their town. Batchy's got Batchy's got a great park. Batchy is kind of the only place I hit steel because it's like a long run and the chairlift's not right over the run, you know? And mm. I guess I was thinking more of the streets, the street version. Yeah, there's not steel. too much steel, I feel like. I also feel like, you know, all you guys hate on... We got some steelheads, like Warb's Rips. Yeah, He's always true. doing crazy shit. That's um, true. Yeah. You, you guys got mi- Mini Fred held down, too. Good fundies. Well, you mm-hmm. guys get a lot of snow. That mountain's pretty much useless. Once we get all the snow, it's a little it's useless. Flat. But then you start seeing the mason jar clips coming off the top. You know? Ah, mm-hmm. upper yeah. deck. Upper the deck. cone. <laughs> Not the cone. What's that called? Nah, the... Uh, oh, the... The cornice. The cornice. The bald spot? Yeah. The big bald zone? There's a couple hits up there. There's, like, J-Mo's hit. And then there's the cornice. Who's basically. the Who's the king of the cone? Is the question. That's the what that's called. The, the cone. No, the, the cone cone's is like the, the like pow turns. Side little where they go, pow turn. Oh, okay, <laughs> the, where they go hike up that big bald yeah. thing you can see. Uh, we could give that thing to Alport. Alport's yeah. king Alport of the can, cone. Alport can have the cone. Cone king. What yeah. about Jerry Lopez? Where does he fit in the equation? I mean, Jerry's kind of sneaky out there. You like don't see him, but you know he's bored in. Mm. Yeah, that's the I, like, deal. He's there somewhere. Him. Yeah. See, I thought you were gonna roast Salt Lake a little bit more, so I was kind of I added some more ammunition for Ben. Like your guys' roundabouts suck ass. The roundabouts are trash. They do suck. <laughs> our our traffic is a single lane, just like road into a roundabout. Yeah, who planned that? That's, also, what's up with know. your speed limits, dude? It's like what thirty miles an hour everywhere you go. Everyone's probably a little baked up out there. They gotta, <laughs> they gotta slow That's it down. True. Yeah. That is true. They're all just chilling. Yeah. Nobody cares. Things huh? are things are legal out there. You know. That I got true. I got a deep cut too. Like the back arm. Uh, the back arm on the turn, just wait. What's waving, up with the batchy back arm? Everybody. Just wait. You just oh, this you're one? just waving yeah. to everybody. What, what's going on with that? I'm not. I'm not a big back you're arm not, guy. That's but, bad. but a lot of other batchy who, guys are. Who founded that? Be whatever. I have no clue. This one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Damn. All right. That's too surfy. <laughs> yeah. This shit. Maybe it's the Lopez thing. <sighs> okay. Good stuff. So you did your first X Games. What? Fifteen. I think I don't know. I did a. I went to X Games once as a forerunner. Not that many heads came. Like no one was there, so I got in randomly and I fell both times. But like Mason Aguirre got in that year. Like it was rogue. Uh, it was like a random year. And then I did get invited back next year, but I don't know the exact age. Your bro said you had braces and a goggle tan your first year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a, true. For that sure. sounds awesome. It's yeah. a good look. Great look. Mm-hmm. So yeah. early sponsors, you had Burton. Yeah, Burton for, like, uh, got on Burton when I was, like, seven. So, like, they were doing this, like, Warren Miller shoot thing at Mammoth, and I just went with Ben because he was going, and they kind of just, like, hooked it up, put me in the gear, and I rode. And Brock was there. I met Brock when I was, like, six. He was, like, my first Which Brock? Crouch. Brock Crouch. Okay, cool. Yeah. Me and Brick were chilling mad young, like, six at North Star doing nationals. And then 
he was also on that Burton stuff, so we were just do it. We like went to this Warren Miller shoot, and I just chilled with him the whole time, and it was epic. And then on Burton for just like yeah, wow, they hooked it up for good like good time. Dude, it's so funny. He's 23. He's been in the game for like 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> Contracts. He's already been through Burton. You mm-hmm. said Volcom fired you. Yeah, Volcom. I like, got. What'd you do to get fired at Bo- from Volcom at 10 or whatever? I think I just 15. had 15. 15. I think I had too big of a contract. Uh, the homie who put me on got fired for just like, I don't know. I think they were doing big budget cuts. Oren, mm. right? Yeah, Oren put me on. <laughs> Shout out Oren. Hooked me up. And then, yeah. Your deal was too fat. Once I think they my deal was too fat. I had a three year contract and then they bought me out in the second year. So I got like. Two years of that at one time. Well, let's just talk about it's over. It's past. Yeah. So it's over. It's past. Yeah, it, the contract was fifty, just 50K. salary each year. Woo. Each year. So then I did just the second year. I like got a call, got cut, but then I did get like a hundred G check. A hundred G at sixteen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, a hundred G just to be like, <laughs> yo, you're not riding for us hey, anymore. You're, you're cut. I don't understand the <laughs> point of doing that. <laughs> yeah, why not keep you on? <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't You're really know. You're already paying for it. That's like best case scenario, actually. I don't know if I fit the vibe that well. I was you kind of like... They checked your art status? I had a big, I had a big rock star <laughs> sticker on there. I don't know if anyone was vibing with me too they much. They were like, have you seen this guy's canvases? I mean, the, the art's just not quite... <laughs> the art's just not there, yeah. <laughs> oh, but $100,000 at that age, that's incredible. So, so no, you, very nice. Very 15, fortunate. 16, you get a check like that. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? What do you do? Yeah, that's, like a, that's like two million dollars at that age. Yeah, I bought a truck when I was seventeen. Basically, I could save my money pretty well. I think yeah. you didn't burn budge. Haven't been burning too much budge. Damn, I see. I like a good crash and burn story early, mm-hmm. where you fall. You know, you fall hard, and then everybody loves a, a Cinderella yeah, comeback. Come back. Yeah, they come back. You crash. You have enough time. You're so you're young enough to be able to make it all back. You could still do that. I like to think I'm on a slow spiral down. <laughs> It's You're not, still spiraling? Yeah, it's, I'm still kind of spiraling down. That's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> no, kids on the up and up. When I met you, like seeing you back in the day, you and your brother, it seemed to me like you were headed to be this huge contest kid. Mm-hmm. There was so much contest pressure like all the time. I got so over it. But because uh, you kind of like go to contests for people like people above you, like James or coaches or like whatever team managers being like, are you going to do this contest? And you're kind of doing it for them. Like, Got to a point where I just, like, wasn't doing them for me. I never, like, thought I could win or anything. I was just going because I knew I could, like, make finals and then chill with my homies or whatever. Best part of the contest was always right after it. Like, you're done. You're, like, perfect. Made it through. You were like, I want that I want that medal. I got to win. I want first place. No, and maybe that's because I never really, like, won any big ones. So I never, like, got that taste. But I don't know. I just – I remember James asking me to go into an Oslo X Games one time. He's like, do you think you can win? And I was like – no, like I'm going again, like a Yumu and Sean White and shit. Like I don't probably can't win. Like, fuck. but that's just honest. What like, does he say when you say something like that? I don't know. He was always a big like get in your head type of coach, and we didn't like. Me and James are way better homies than we are coaching, and I couldn't take anyone telling me what to do. That's when I would like not want a board breakdown. Oh, you want me to do this? Yeah. Guess what? I'm gonna not do anything. Then. Yeah, that's exactly how I work. Ben would try to help me and just tell him to like fuck off. Like it would not work. So it seemed like talking to Baden, he was mentioning that like when you were a kid, it seemed like contests were fun because you're competing against kids. And then when you get elevated to that big stage where you're doing Grand Prix and X Games, it started to be not fun for you. Yeah, me and Nick kind of, I think, went through the same shit. We were both going to them and we were like, I think we're both pretty good at them, but we just like weren't really doing it for the right reason, I think. And it does just like you straight up when I was like, 17 that's all i've done my whole life is travel to colorado to do half pipe contests i was like this is fucked like i can't do this anymore like it just started hitting me and then it's like you travel to like switzerland but then you just ride the same thing you could ride in the state you're not doing anything different it was just like getting so old for me Mm. and like we called it cd i remember the last contest we did we were at locks open we were calling it cd contest depression (laughs) Drinking like beers in his hotel room or something because it's the well, same contest. half pipe everywhere. Conte- yeah, you're doing the same thing. You're just in a cool in a spot like different spot. Like in the repetition, it just gets so old. Like I, think, I couldn't deal with it. I don't know. I think to be great at contests, you have to get addicted to winning. Like mm-hmm. that drug, you got to want that more than anything. And if you're not winning, contests aren't fun. No, for sure. And I think the people you see it like 
you could tell like Scotty's probably addicted to winning and wants that win, you know, which is badass, but like that's just not how it was. But you did get some good fundamentals going through that. Oh yeah. Got some fundamental I mean, riding half pipe is the shit. It's so fun. Like the icy ones are definitely kind of scary, but like you get like the Mount Hood pipe is like the funnest thing. Like why? Just like slushy ride in transition. If you do ride a pipe good, it doesn't even feel like you really left the ground. You know, there's like no, I don't know. I'm pretty good at popping a flat, but like <laughs> if you do ride it good, it's like feels like nothing. You know. Do you think it helped your fundamentals in hitting backcountry jumps and natty stuff and everything else? I think it kind of helps just like for board control in a sense. I don't know about like really trick wise. I kind of wish I did slope style for longer. So because now I'm just hitting backcountry jumps and I don't have all these tricks you go hit a jump with someone who's still doing it you're like damn you're fucked they just do anything they want so it's kind of crazy like i don't know Dude. hit a jump with red he's gonna do anything he wants you know i was watching you hit the double line and logan doing the front nines and i was just like god this kid's fundamentals are so fucking good dude same that, shit i mean that you people would probably say that's like some bachelor shit but i don't know it's just like you snowboard literally have been snowboarding for so long that things is like a part of your body at this point <laughs> the snowboard? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. <laughs> yeah. Riding since yeah. like four or exactly, something. Exactly, huh? Mm. Yeah, you're, that becomes a part of your body. And you're on the, you're riding every day <clears throat> since you were four. Basically, every time there was snow, you're you're out there doing this. Oh, yeah, and then Oregon is easy. You just go to Hood in the summer, ride up there. My da- my pops would always just drive us up for the day, drive us back. I think awesome. also fundamentals for half pipe, because you can't pre-spin in a half pipe. Like, you have to, like, wait. And then do your trick once you're in the air. Yeah, the best people, like, they don't even look like they're going to spin, and then they just, like, hit something right off the lip, you know? Looks like they're going to do a straight air. Like, and then just Ayumu. Like, yeah, he, and he, he's, like, the best at that. He literally is so chilling, and then he does a triple cork. Mm-hmm. And that is just, like, boss-ass fundamentals. And then land at the so top. So I think that the- homie, like, vert skated, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, he does, like, Olympic stuff now, I think. Mm. So do you feel like there was, because I feel like you're a style guy. So do you feel like there's a lack of style in the competitive side of snowboarding? Oh, yeah. There's a huge lack of style, especially half pipe for me. Like, I respect everything these dudes are doing, but most of this shit looks so bad to me. I don't know why. Like, just like some people kill it. There's This is like a, hand, like a handful of people, but like, I don't know. I think people could just focus on style more. Wait. But no one does that. If you do spin the extra rotation, the judges are going to give you that score, you know? So it's, like, hard to say. Someone does just do a trick. Like, if someone went out and just did a 16 with, like, a different grab at X Games this week or something, the homie who does the 18, even if it looks like shit, is going to beat it, you know? That's just how it's always going to be, I feel like. So what do you think needs to change? I have no clue. I got no no (laughs) answers for anyone, yeah. You don't think judges care much about style? I don't know. I don't think – I don't know. I – and I – I'm a bad person to talk to about this because I'm just anti-judged. I don't like snowboarding for someone else. That's, like, the weird thing. I like snowboarding for, like, my peers or people I look up to or respect. But when it comes to the judge aspect, I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I'm going to do this run, and then you're just going to tell me what you think about it. Like, it's kind of whack to me. Mm-hmm. It's also kind of crazy, too, looking at, like, a like half-pipe judging. I don't know. I think this is what they do. I'm not sure. But I, a lot of times it's, like, write the, the rundown. So it's, like, 10, 10, 12... Nine ten, and if you're just looking at that, that's all. That's what they're looking I, at. I don't. Afterwards. I don't know. I might be totally wrong. I've heard that too. But I think. but uh, I don't know. That would probably, you know, I may be speaking out of my ass here, but but that would probably make you not put a lot of emphasis on like, oh, he, you know, grabbed roast beef on that. Yeah. Right. Well, you're you're looking at just the number of spin. No, for sure. And it is like people are doing crazy shit with dope style. Like, don't get me wrong, but and they make it look good, but it's just like so insane. I, dude, I watched women's slope style X Games today. The chicks are the sickest to watch. They're doing like 12s and 10s, just pretty dope stees. Tess Cody, back 10 indie. Yeah. Stomp the yard. Can like relate with that. Can't relate with what any of the dudes are doing like at all on the jumps. It's crazy. Yeah. I feel bad for those like having to do that run of like 16 to 18. Imagine being at the top. Yeah. You're like, all right, I'm about to just go absolutely insane. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to chill. Like, <laughs> Dude, you still got pipe skills though. Bleeding time, double chuck. Oh yeah, I like I like riding half pipe still. I enjoy it a lot. It's the best. I feel like a lot of riders you ca- that were half pipe riders, you see them back in the pipe, and they just something you don't forget. Yeah, no, it's it's the like one of my favorite things to ride for sure. 
You know what you kind of need, though, to ride a half pipe is you need that, like, McDermott board. If you just, like, go to a pipe in the winter that's probably kind of icy and you just have, like, your normal board, it's, like, mad hard. You kind of need the, like, crazy sharp edges. Well, yeah, what makes a good pipe board? Just, like, stiff board, really sharp edges. Like, our edges were always so sharp doing contests. It was crazy. But then you ride that board. I think Ben was saying this, too. Just, like, on a groomer, it's, like, insanely good. Just fast, super good at turning. But and well tuned is what you're saying as yeah, well. Yeah, you right? just need that like well tuned thing, which is kind of kind of a pain in the ass. But then it does help so much. So let's run it back to so you're talking about at Vulcan, you get dropped at fifteen. You're kinda first of all, like, did you have a moment where you're like, I'm done with contest? Yeah, it was at that lax uh locks open with Nick. And I uh I didn't even try. Like I was telling James and my coach Ricky Bauer, who was the shit. Big shout out to Ricky. Um, I was telling them I was just done. Like, I was like, I don't even care. I'm just done. And James was like, no, you got to still do it. Like, you have good style. And I was like, dude, this just, like, doesn't make me happy. I was having a bunch of nights that whole contest, like, crying to my pops on the phone. Big shout out Jake Pates, actually. He was kind of helping me through that shit. And then... Like, you were actually crying. Yeah, you're, just, you're like, bummed. bummed. Like, yeah, didn't want to be there. He remembers dropping me off at the airport, going to that contest. He's like, I wish I, like, didn't tell you to go. Because I was, he could tell. And then I just, like, didn't try. Did, did like, three front fives, maybe a front lip in my run or something. And then immediately after that, I was filming for Everybody, Everybody. So I just went on a trip with Brandon and Finder and Phil in Innsbruck. So it was, like, pretty epic. And my coach, Ricky, Ricky Bauer was the shit. Because he was like, dude you don't have to do this. Like, you can go snowboard still. He's like, when I quit half pipe, like, I had to be a carpenter or something, like, the next week. That's what he told me. So I was like, all right, you're the shit, like, epic. And then he's like, do what you want to do. So that helped me a lot. So then did you make a conscious decision? Like, I'm going to focus on filming videos now. Yeah, then it was full just like, I just want to snowboard for me and try to film some stuff. And you got those good fundies, so that's easy. Mm -hmm. I had good, and I just had good homies, like... Who wanted to do the same thing? Jared wanted to do the same thing. Nick wanted to do the same thing. Yeah. Because Nick stopped doing contests at the same time, right? Yeah, he stopped doing contests at the same time. Actually, we got, like, kicked off the U.S. team, like, five minutes apart. We were together. <laughs> These he, guys. he got the phone call, and then I literally, like, five minutes after They could have just done a call. conference call. What'd they say? <laughs> just like, yeah, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Some chill. We weren't in it anymore. We didn't do what was happening. Like, why, So why did you choose half pipe? Instead of slopestyle. Yeah, good question. I didn't really choose half pipe. I uh, I tried to do both. When I first got on the team, I was still doing slopestyle and half pipe. And Bill Enos was the slope coach, and I loved chilling with Bill. So it was like... He's the shit. He would let me come on the slope trips, and it was awesome. But I just, like, did shitty at contests in slopestyle. There was that one Mammoth Grand Prix. It was, like, Sochi year. All the Grand Prix got canceled, so they did three contests in, like three days or something but i was doing slope and pipe so i did like six contests and i just fell every slope style run all on different features on the first rail one time like just falling apart out there was the last person like <laughs> it was all u.s people because it was for the olympics and i was like i had the lowest amount of points so i dropped behind jamie every run you know just like yeah i'm not gonna win i'm just here kind of like <laughs> and i fell every run and then i think i did pretty good in half pipe and like got invited to x games that year too after that so just like you got a third Grand Prix? Kind of just happened. Yeah, I got one third Grand Prix. But all the, all the borders were at locks open, so it was kind of like a gimme, you know? It was a little, <laughs> bit, little bit easier, yeah. You're so talented, though. It was obviously like some mental thing, huh? Yeah, a lot of mental things. You're just I not a contest, like, dude. I'm not a big pro I want to prove myself to any one guy. Wanna, I have to like dig deep and do it for myself if I want to do anything. Which, yeah, I don't know. It's just the way I am, I guess. And with this contest falling out for you, it left you kind of without a board sponsor, right? Um, yes, but then Burton, I was on Burton for so long, and Ben was still on him that like Burton homies still hooked it up, for sure. Frankie Chapin hooked me up fat in my whole career, for sure. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and talk to you guys about Bub's Naturals. You know they make the best collagen. We always talk about hammer and collagen on this show. But Ethan, did you know they're making coffee? Christian, I did. <laughs> Bub's Brew. <laughs> the, the original blend. It's USDA organic, fair trade. Also, it's first ever coffee bean to be Whole30 approved. The Bub's Naturals namesake drives from Glenn Bub Doherty, 
who was heroically killed in Benghazi, Libya in 2012. Bub's Naturals is a way of life. They believe wellness is driven from the inside out through the spirit of Glenn and a passion for nature's highest quality, sustainably sourced ingredients. We help people to reach their maximum human potential while giving 10% back to charity. Their mission is simple. Feel great. Do good. Head over to bubsnaturals.com. Use promo code BOMBHOLE for 20% off. Again, bubsnaturals.com, promo code BOMBHOLE, 20% off. I think you might get a free mug. I'm not sure if that's happening yet, but at some point you're going to get a, a mug with purchase, I well, believe. 20% too. off is huge, and it's a product that's going to keep you out there riding longer, so give it a shot. All right, we got some big news coming at you from the Bombhole. Signups are live for the Bombhole Cup, which is April 1st and 2nd at Brighton Resort right here in Utah. It's going to be a giant event. Most spectators Brighton had ever seen last year, according to Jared. So day one is a bank slalom for all ability levels. Day two is a park showdown. So we got a park jump, a bunch of rails. We got a limo we're going to be jumping over. All ability levels both days. So bank slalom is really cool. We got all different types of classes in accordance to age group or ability level. We got a pro class. We got an industry class. We have an adaptive class for the non-able-bodied. We got a vintage boards class for boards pre-2000. We got age groups. We got Grom, 15 to 29, 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus classes. We got skiers on boards this year. So that's really fun. If you're a skier, you can't ski, but you can come snowboard. We have a split board race. So you split board up, race down. So fun if you're a racer, granola eating split boarder, all ability levels coming out for Bomb Hole Cup April 1st. And then day two is a park showdown. So we got open class. We got Grom. We got Pro. The session is just absolutely electric. Last year was legendary. We want this thing to be a community building event. So if you're a member of the snowboard community and you want to meet new people, you want to meet pros, everybody's going to come hang out. If you're a listener of the Bomb Hole, come meet other listeners. It's our big event where our online community gets together for a couple days, April 1st and 2nd at Brighton. Again, signups are live, bombhole.com. And uh, hopefully we see you guys there. So around the time that you got dropped by Volcom and you're like kind of over contests and you haven't started filming, was did you feel like you were lost at that moment? Yeah, I was for sure lost. If you like talk to my pops, I was just kind of like floating. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. There's a lot of times where... I don't know, like I kind of said, I always felt like I was doing it for someone else. And then, like, I never really chose snowboarding, honestly. Like, I was kind of just born into it. So I was going through a big thing around that time. I was like, do I even like this? Like, am I going to keep doing it? And then if you're like, then when you're not getting support from brands, you're like, does it even make sense? Like, why do I do it? So it was this huge thing, but it was kind of when I did leave and started doing shit for myself is when I started getting hooked up more and then it just kind of picked up and I started getting more hyped on it again like yeah I don't know kind of snowball effect it's interesting if you think about you've been doing it your whole life and that's all you know it seems like it could be easy to become jaded Mm -hmm. yeah for sure and I think I did just get fully jaded on the pipe scene and was kind of losing it losing my love for the whole thing. Yeah, and your brother's here, like, fully focused. He kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah, Ben Ben was just kind of crushing, but Ben was also filming video parts, so I'm watching him go out and film and, like, kind of crush it at that. And then, Is so that what kind of got you drawn to seeing that? Seeing him do that. I think I always knew. I never wanted... I always wanted to be a pro snowboarder, but never. I never saw myself really just a competitive guy. We kind of, like, rode at Bachelor, like, riding pow and... Like, I don't know, all the time and just free riding. So we were more free riders than park riders, honestly. Then you would just, like, I always think we had, since we rode a bachelor and we rode, like, POW so much, we had a shitty park back in the day, then we would go to, like, Breck or you go ride the copper half pipe and you're like, damn, this thing's really fucking good. And then you could just learn some trick. You're, like, hungry and learn tricks mad fast instead of the kids that live there and take it for granted, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Nick was the same way. Nick's from Steamboat. But then would just like travel a little bit in Colorado. He was like free ride, and then would travel and be like, "All right, I could just ride here for like a week and just bust down." Basically, uh, hit, hit, let's hit a Patreon. So this uh, question is from John Martin, and he says, "Gabe, have you blazed? Are you chilling?" John Martin, I have blazed. I am chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mama. <laughs> so I'm curious about this. 
You seem so chill. He's pretty chill. <laughs> what's the What's the secret? Uh, I mean, it definitely. I don't know. I just try to enjoy life, and I don't know, not take anything too serious. Like, and I definitely do smoke weed, so it just chills out a little bit. But um, I don't know. You literally, you can spend time being like pissed or frustrated or trying to hustle, and it's just like not as fun. Like, if you just slow down and chill. You'll probably get stuff done. I mean, I think about it too. Like the when I'm riding with like my people I look up to, who are like my close friends, like Ben, Red, Jared, Nick. Like you're gonna be on your shit. All these people are so good, and if you're just having fun, then you're probably gonna produce something. Like so, it's just not just not trying to rush anything and just chill out. And then like I don't know, random. If That's you're good. always hanging with that crew, yeah, you're, you're gonna do some good stuff, right? <laughs> That's interesting. Just have to too. rub off think, on you. Thinking about his crew, right? You think about they're the best snowboarders in the world, pretty much. You know, arguably. It's fair to say. And, and then, and you're kind of like a low key, reserved personality. So it's funny if you if you were to take Gabe and put him in like any other crew, he would be like shitting on everybody. But when you when you start riding with with the heavy hitters, like it, it's it's crazy, like just who you're around and and how much it elevates you and. Yeah, but osmosis. I think you're just that's gotta everything. be good. Yeah, yeah. I think you gotta be good, but I think it is fully who you surround yourself with. Like Ben or dude, the one house in here filming with Sage. You just like you're around a dude who's working hard and wants it. You're like gonna be with him on his shit, kind of. You know, it's like perfect. You want to be with those people who are like pushing you. Jared's like Jared's hungry, so you know when you're with him, you're gonna be working and it's sick. You're like he's good, wants to get it. Let's go get it. Like it's pretty dope. Mm. Now let's talk weed for a second. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's your ratio? I'm pretty dirty. I go basically more tobacco. I think I'm actually just as more tobacco than weed. Yeah, I think I'm probably just addicted to smoking tobacco. That's like a doofkin, huh? Yeah, uh, spliff. I don't know, seventy spliff. thirty. Seventy thirty. All right, Wait, that's a split. That's spliff ratio, right you there. You smack. Yeah. You smacking one of those before a big wedge. Smacking one of those before a big wedge for sure. Smack, if I don't, I mean, you got to just do what you would normally do. You don't want to change your whole vibe for something, you know? Um, you think it chills you out? I think it chills me out. I think it's a little just like break, you know? Think about stuff. Chill out a little bit. Keep it chill. Kind of makes snowboarding really fun, you know? You, you could just like have a dope pow day at Brighton or something, and you're like, if you do bake up a little bit, it'll probably make that little front side turn just a little bit more dope. <laughs> You'll like put a little more stink on it or something. I don't know. Did I remember you guys came and stayed at my crib for one of those uh, snowboarder movie years? What, what's, mm -hmm. what movie was that? Everybody, you know? everybody. That was beta? beta year. Beta? Beta. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, these kids were like every before this they were doing smoking. Before, oh, was it this, honeymoon phase? Maybe honeymoon phase of smoking. Dude, they just yeah. starting. It was like every 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and it was working for them though. Yeah, no, it's fun. <laughs> See, the, the, here's another thing though. This guy he talks about uh, you know he's he, he's chill, but I was talking to Baden. He's like, yeah, but he bottles up his emotions. He mm. bottles them up and then he snaps. Yeah, so that is, I will snap. The snap. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll snap for sure. Chill, 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 snap. Yeah, no, I'll definitely snap on you, and it sucks. I hate that. Then I'm always embarrassed after, but. What makes you snap? I don't know, annoying shit. <laughs> nothing, nothing specific? <laughs> nothing specific. It just kind of adds up? Yeah, Ben, if I hang out with Ben for like two weeks, and it's just like, everything he does annoys me. <laughs> Literally everything. <laughs> the way right. he drives, like. Everything. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, he could just like walk into the room and I like get pissed off or something. I don't know. Just default mode annoyed, <laughs> annoyed. around Ben Ferg. <laughs> oh, that's good. I guess that's brothers for you, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk ratios. Because <laughs> right. Brown Crew, we were just we just went on a trip. I'm actually filming for Brown. I you got are. A, I got a clip. Officially. Yeah, I got a clip. Yeah. Back in the saddle. Me and I, man. <laughs> Back in the saddle. Me and I, man, we're riding fucking high. We got some clips. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody's rolling up in that crew. Uh, I kind of want you to just maybe talk ratios amongst the crew. Okay, so ratios are all different. Butters probably smokes the most and eats the most weed, too. A homie will just, like, eat, like, 200 milligrams after a day, and then he's blazing with you, too. Really? He doesn't care, yeah. He's not curled up under the coffee yeah, table? Yeah, that's... He's just chilling. <laughs> Same old. And then, but he's definitely more green. He's still smoking splits, but more green. Scott Blum's straight sig. He goes full brown. 
No, it's just a cigarette, like nothing in there. Yeah, just, he's just smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. So Blum's on the cig. Nick is a step down from Blum, where he just puts like maybe some crumbs in there. I think he's rolling spliffs, but his are like ninety five five percent. And then I'm definitely down a little more green. Me and Parker, I kind of think, are around the same zone ratio. Anyone dude, running green beans out there? Dude, no one's really running green beans. Jared used to smoke green beans, but now we're, we're getting him on the tobacco a little so bit. So is that why I it's think... called brown cinema? Because the brown yeah, slip? what's up? Dude, I don't know. I mean, could be, but I, I actually have no clue why it's called brown. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody knows. It's actually in the metaverse is where you can, yeah, find, you can figure find that out. You, you have to buy an NFT, yeah. and there's a the NFT with that information booklet. on it. Yep. Yeah. Um, green beans, so I think the weed's too strong these days for green beans. Like, but oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't think you can go shred after, probably. I mean, some people can. but No, weed is potent these days. Yeah, you smoke some green beans, you're, 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 you're couch-bound. Are you sponsored? Yeah, shout out Tokyo Starfish. Woo! Woo! Kids got a weed sponsor. Yeah. Who owns that? Dude, a bunch of Mc, dope Is it McAllister? People. Yeah, McAllister. Pro? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Jason McAllister, Jason Shirts, homie Kevin Porterfield working over there. And they sponsored you. Yeah, they hook it up. They just hook it up with a like a month little uh, monthly package, little month like monthly bindle. Uh, yeah, budget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's kind of nice if you leave. Like now we're on a trip. Leave for maybe a month. Go back, you get a little more. Like it stacks up a oh, little bit. Oh, you have like a uh, account basically. Yeah, have and a little once account. a month. You can come in there and clean mm-hmm. them out. And they're just the shit because they are just like the OG border homies in town. And then they have a dispo. Mm. It's kind of sick. They're kind of crushing. They got like three spots. If you're in Bend, Oregon, go to that Tokyo, Tokyo Starfish. Starfish. Yeah, love that. All right, let's run back to filming. So you got uh, you're filming for Beta first. That was your first yeah, part. That was your first. Yeah, yeah, first part was Beta, and we literally had no no clue what we were doing because we were filming with To. To like kind of filmed with Ben. The they made a Hell Mary movie the year before, and it was pretty sick. But To was still super green. We didn't know any spots. Who's To for the Tyler Orton? Tyler Orton, yeah. And, 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 watchers, and not Stony Buds because he definitely knew that. Dude, I was filming, <laughs> shooting. I was, I was like on on trips, <laughs> almost every trip. Yeah, To. Buds, we did actually good photos from that. I've seen him. Mm-hmm. We have a print, I believe, from there. We yeah. got some photos from that. I yeah, I cruise a lot with the Jibbers too. The, the whole crew. Yeah. Picture. Reed was, and Cruz. Yeah. Yep. It was pretty awesome. That how'd you get? Get on with that crew. I just got on with that. Uh, Bridges hit me up, and you I was hand doing selected a rad crew, and yeah, and I was doing contests still, so I didn't film for that much. I think we did like, we did the one Innsbruck trip that was like ten days, and we had terrible weather. Our first day was the only sunny pow day we had, and we didn't know where we were going anyway. And then did like a week in Utah with you, and then basically just like a week in Whistler. Mm. So filmed a little bit. And it was like the first time I sledded and got out there actually. Two questions. First question. I heard you shit yourself in Innsbruck. <laughs> Different year, but correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to elaborate on we that? We can elaborate on this one. This was everybody, everybody the next year. This is actually right after the quit the quit the contest scene. Ah. <laughs> this, is this, this is this trip. And shit your pants. Yeah, and it was like end of the trip. It was just me, Finder, and Brandon there. We're sleeping in a straight hostel with three twin beds next to each other. And we got just annihilated the night before. <laughs> like, Finder, we were at this sick-ass bar. It's called John Montagues. It's in Innsbruck. I know people know that one. And then Finder left, and then I left. Like, I was like, I got to go home, Brandon. Left Brandon there. He was, like, hanging with some girls, I think. And then literally waddled back to the hotel room. <laughs> Get to the hostel, find Finder sleeping in the hallway in front of the door. No. Yeah, so he couldn't straight. get in the bathroom? He could, no, he wasn't in our hotel room yet. He's in the oh, hallway of front. the hotel. <laughs> yeah. Just like sleeping, leaning against the door. So like we go in there and then, it, I mean, straight blackout, wake up at eight, just pants full. No. <laughs> yeah. Wake up at like eight and I'm in the middle bed. Brandon's next to me <laughs> with a girl in his bed. <laughs> Finders in his bed, and it literally does just smell so fucking bad. Like, in a very it, probably small room. Euro rooms aren't like oh yeah, a US small hotel. room. And I had to just, <laughs> I just got out and like took my sheets off, threw them away in the room. Still smells terrible. <laughs> got and then just took a shower like with my underwear on. That you were just, just wrapped full, up the like. sheets like train spotting, where that dude poops in the bed. Dude, I've never seen train <laughs> spotting, <laughs> but I yeah, I did it's that. It's basically what he did, except he spills it on the breakfast table. After. I got some <laughs> bad. Yeah, I got a couple funny shit stories actually. Yeah, dude, that sounds like a great one. Mm-hmm. 
Do you want to hit oh, another yeah. one while we're on two? the subject? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we could hit another one. Okay, Ever, <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can dive in. <laughs> Let's do a deep dive. <laughs> do a deep dive. Okay, this one sucks, actually. This is the most embarrassing moment of my life. I'm at... That's great. I'm at the skate park right next to our house called, like, Rock Ridge. Literally could see it out of my bedroom. The schools weren't there. The schools I went to, like, elementary school, middle school. And then when you're on the U.S. team, you got USADA coming around to drug test you. So, like, my mom calls. She's like, yo, there's some USADA people here. You got to come take a piss test. And I go to the house, and I'm just like... I can't piss because I had to shit so bad. So I can't piss in front of the guy. Like, tried like three times where the guy's just looking at full package, like, and I'm trying to piss. I'm like a pretty young kid. And I finally just tell him, I'm like, dude, I have to shit so bad. Like, I cannot piss right now. And he's like, I gotta be in here with you. Are you serious? Yeah. He's like, I can't leave. So that one's, it's not too bad, but That's I did just. Buck. I did How just have to drop, I don't know, 14, 15 or something. Yeah, when you're that age, that's tough. And I did just have to go full. Like, it wasn't that dope of a poop either, just yeah, like right in front of this guy. Pretty one of those small nasty bathroom. ones. So, like, shit, wipe, flush, stand up, turn around, piss, give him the cup, basically. Like, the guy <laughs> just <laughs> loves his job that time. <laughs> yeah, like, I was thinking about it. I was like, this guy's job, like, is so weird. Like, yeah. He gets home. So how was your day, honey? Well, I watched the 14-year-old take a shit today. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Like, so weird. Dude, that's, yeah, it takes a unique person to want to do that yeah. job. Mm-hmm. Bizarre. Oh, yeah, I, my question number two. How was your experience staying with Stony Buds when you came and visited filming for Beta? Dude, it was good. He had some sick-ass dogs. He had some cats. You said Bean. some... You said some really funny shit to me before I went to bed one night. I'm, like, sleeping on this couch upstairs, and you're like... Yeah, just so you know, this rug, the cats like to piss on. So <laughs> if it smells like piss all night, I'll move that in the morning for you. Or some shit. Like. Dude, those, some of the, those animals, man. <laughs> yeah. And my cat is a special needs cat. Bean. You know? Bean, yeah. Yeah. Bean's a living legend. It's yeah. kind of like the one of the flat face That's ones, Bean, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so cute. She's deaf and she's special needs. And <laughs> there's no like... I, see, I saw this stuff on the net recently where you can teach cats... How to use the toilet, and I'm like, Bean's not gonna figure this shit out. Not, I yeah, think we should give Bean the super air horn. Yeah, let's give Bean the air horn. <laughs> Bean. <laughs> Bean thinks Bean thinks he's a dog. Yeah, Bean thinks is a little dog. Big shout out, Bean. Big shout out to Bean. It was fun having that crew at the crib too. Yeah, it was sick. Good kids. So then the next year, uh, everybody, 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 and Joy. Wow. Oh, those are the same year. Same year. Damn, it's a big year. I didn't realize that. I've never filmed for one project in one year, besides this year. Finally doing one year to Brown. But, like, did everybody, everybody enjoy and kind of just had a couple shots in each, you know? And then actually did Halcyon, which was one year. Yeah. Okay, couple questions. So you, everybody, everybody, I totally forgot you did this. Earl Grey, the jump that I know a lot about, but... <laughs> <laughs> well versed, an expert, an expert <laughs> for on sure. Uh, that's in Logan, you uh, whatever it doesn't matter. The locations don't matter, but it's a, it's a huge step down that Bodie and Worm and them pioneered, and you fucking back tend it. Tell us about this that is session. A big jump. Yeah, I don't know. I was um, I was with I was in Logan with Finder and Brandon and Phil, and we were just I've never been to Logan before. We were chilling. Finder took us to the jump, showed me. I took a photo from the lip, and that night just, like, sent a text to Ben. Was like, yo, stood on top of this jump. And Ben straight up was like, you should back 10 it. And I was like, that's pretty damn rogue, like, for you to just throw out there. But it kind of is the only trick I could think of doing because it's, like, Ben back seven. It's been, like, cab nine. I, I actually don't know. Ben cab fived, at least. They did some big tricks. Yeah, on they did switched so, back five, didn't yeah. front seven. I feel did. like they did all the tricks you would want to tr- do on it. Mm-hmm. That like So I was like, maybe I'll just Hail Mary this thing. I want to say Hans did something. Hans big. front seven did. Yeah, I mm-hmm. believe. Sorry, keep going. And then just went up there the next day and started building it. Um, went for a first hit, did a back three, like went kind of big, but it was fine. And then that next hit, I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna try back ten. Kind of weird doing like spinning a lot off of a flat drop. Like never really done that. It's like a step down. So it was kind of weird for me. I was like, all right, I'm trying to do a back ten off of this flat lip. Kind of weird. And I fully, like, didn't have enough room. I, like, came up an edge and then went flat base and just did, like, the scariest straight air of my life, basically. And then I went for, like, an hour solo rebuild mid-sesh to widen it out. 
and then tried it again and it like happened. I actually overshot the jump again though. Did like a open like to like a back 14. Came to land and just like was still in the air. So like kept rotating. And then I don't know. Took four tries, but nobody else was hitting it. No, Brandon just solo sesh. Damn. Yeah. Only solo sesh really ha- ever had. Kind of nice to have a solo sesh though, because like no other tracks are yeah. in the landing. It's They're just your. Yours. It's all like, your marks. Once you get the guinea over on yeah. that, the first. How was the first the go? First go. First go was definitely scary, but it is like it's chill. That in run is just like not. You're not starting that high, and it's just like yeah, down. it's very steep and just straight, and it steps it. down, so you don't have to go that fast. It like, steps down huge. Too. Yeah. I didn't think that one, like, I thought Chad's was scarier. That's good. So just realizing this, if you film Joy the same year as Everybody, Everybody, you hit Chad's and Earl Grey the same year. Yeah, that year was, yeah. I think I know why it's called Earl Grey. Why? I think it came to me. Um, Bodie couldn't eat because he was so scared to hit it that it, all he could do was have tea. And no way. Earl Grey tea. That's fresh. That's a fun fact, yeah. bud. I'm pretty sure. I might have made it up, but I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that it sounds like that would be the name, I, right? I like it. If, uh, even we're going to go with it. Let's we're going to go with it. Hey, we got a, we got a Patreon question we about do. Chad's gap. And this one is from Jesse C. And he says, Gabe, this is a serious one. Oh, shit. Did you blaze before Chad's? Dude, uh, I think me and Nick blazed before Chad's. Maybe ratio? not like You ratio. got a ratio for us? Back then, we were probably a little more green, honestly. 50 50? Nah, not fair. I wouldn't, wouldn't <laughs> say that. 60 40. 60 40 on Chad's. Yeah. But, uh. So, but this is like before first go. This is before. This is probably when we were still building it. Building it. But we kind of built it crazy. We were like hustling because the next day was going to be cloudy. So we were trying to get it done for that afternoon to hit it. And then. Did you pull it off? And we pulled it off. Sage went off. Sage did that back 12. Uh, did you, you back seven it? Big ass didn't you back seven it? Yeah, I did back seven. Yeah, and you big thought that was crew. scarier. Just our in, we didn't spend any time on our in run because mm. we were trying to rush, and it was it's a pretty long drop in. The in run takes more time than the jump a lot of times, and it was just bumpy as fuck. Like you're trying to go fast, and it was really bumpy, like kind of sketchy. And Ben Ben went first or fell in the middle, dude. So Oof. Ben went first and went probably too fast and biffed it off the lip and like flew into the middle. No, and then I was next and I was straight, just like all right. I just watched older bro biff it off the lip. Now I, okay, like now I'm gonna hit it. Like fuck that kinda. <laughs> and then Nick was just like, all right, I'll go. And Nick bossed up, and I probably wouldn't have hit it unless Nick bossed up right in front of me, did a sick ass front three off the toes and like lay speed. And I was like, all right, perfect. And then I just did a back three and it was like, all right. Back three, back seven. So that's that's wild. That's a hell of a year. Do you feel like coming off of getting kicked off the U.S. team and then, you know, getting kicked off Volcom, you were like, I got something to prove? Did you have a fire lit? Yeah, definitely that year. And it was after beta year, which I just didn't feel like I filmed at all. And then I just had a soft-ass part in. I was like, got to try to do some dope shit for sure. And were you – when did you get on K2? Got on K2 – Dude, I don't know. It's maybe been four years now. Um, one summer. Actually, beta year, I rode ride boards because Tanner sent me some. Mm. And then that summer, before uh, everybody, everybody year, I was on K2. That was the first year. So that was like a new year, new me scenario. Yeah. New sponsor. New little sponsor. Tommy J hooked it up. <laughs> yep. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you about Autumn Headwear. At Autumn Headwear, style matters. We did a bombhole Autumn collab beanie. Uh, it's available at bombhole.com or Autumn's website as well. And uh, they got a sick team. They got Danimals. They got Cooper Whittier, Cannon Cummins, all stylish individuals. It's a great company. Snowboarder owned Brad Allband is a great designer who makes all the stuff. Uh, it's just a cool brand if you want to support snowboarding. Head on over to autumnheadwear.com. Used promo code BOMBHOLE. For 20% off. It's going to get you 20% off of some stylish hats. Get on them. Hi, everybody. Mike Rav here. And today we are talking fit. First thing I want to talk about is my signature sweater that comes in two colors. Comes in the black and the white and comes in the blue and the red. I like these two different colors because one, you can kind of fly under the radar and the other, you stand out a little bit more. It's also just the perfect piece for warmth and layering. Um, It's great for under the jacket and it's also great when you want to take off the jacket and shed some layers. Um, You still feel like you're wearing something that's weighted and uh, gives you some protection. Other than that, I've got the Micro Ave signature beanie, hand knitted. 
and it's got like room to run it with the resi or not whatever you're kind of feeling it's a warm hat it's got a cool kind of pattern on it which i really like and then other than that i was wearing the desiree pant and jacket for most of the season and that stuff's just got a good fit kind of on the baggier side and loose fitting and um it felt good wearing that stuff paired with the sweater and the hat and everything like that so that's it for talking fit hope you guys find your fit for next season all right let's get back into it i don't think we hit a smelling salt yet on this show gabe you hit one of these yet i i have hit one but i'm not looking forward to this I'm not. <laughs> okay why aren't you looking forward to it i'm ready to run through some walls <laughs> Shit kind of hurts. It hurts. Dude, a you homie on nostrils. a kayak just yeah. sent us a video. E.G. the killer, I think is E.G. the killer. Something like that. Hitting the front board. Yeah. He's, dude, he smacked some run through wall smelling salts, and then they start, like, fucking shit up on the kayak. In the water. Who would have known, dude? Yeah. All right. It's yeah. like Avatar 3 out there. Start off. Are they advertised water resistant? I'm not. Now they are, maybe. Well, I mean, we, well, well we are. E.G. We, the killer. Yeah. Water right. resistant. You just pinch this monkey? Yeah, pinch, pinch a loaf. Oh, shit. <laughs> he did the slow burn. He, yeah. Double back. It's not. Good. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh! Oh! For the people at Ooh. home, if they hear this noise. Yep. That's a smacker. Oh, Ooh. it's bad. <coughs> you keep going back for more, you know? But then you just keep hitting it. Woo-wee. Until she's dead. Woo! Who we got? Oh. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> I got a good one. Deep. The deep burn. <laughs> Woo. Gabe, who's in the who's in the lobby? Yeah, G Ferb. All right, we got Sneaks. And we got Riley Nickerson. We got Nick Fado. And we got the legend Scott Blum. Mm. The legend. Yeah. What's he sipping on? Next rock star recruit, Scott Blum. Twisted T. Yeah, he's sipping on a twisted T. You get him tea. on Rockstar? Yeah, we're putting him on the star. No, I actually have no. I got no. <laughs> so Rockstar, I got no pull. No pull. Let's talk Rockstar. Let's talk Rockstar, dude. They're on the up and up. We yep. got a couple team members in the lobby over there. Two freshies in the lobby who's, over there. Who's the other team member? We got Stax and we got Nikki Fado. Really, they're all on the star. Star, yeah. and I saw Jill Perkins running on her. Perky, hat. really? Yeah. Oh yeah, the stars on the up. The stars on making a move. Mm-hmm. Shout out Sean Messing, Mateus. They're holding it down. Well, I- dude, I mean, you've been on there for nine years. Oh yeah, they got the back. They're good. Yeah, I mean, they've had your back. That's pretty tight. Been been mad hyped. Super appreciated. Not gonna lie, it's crazy how that that works. Like the marketing psychologically, because no offense to you, you're holding it down for the star. But when I was looking at Rockstar for a long time, I was like. Ah. It's kind of a tough look, you know, the, the big old star, you know, and then all of a sudden you got stacks. This crew that you respect. You got, you got Gabe, you got Nick, you got Jill on there, and a couple OGs still holding it down. I'm kind of like, Rockstar's kind of hidden. Hidden? Oh, yeah, it's hidden. Davis, is he up in the mix? Oh, yeah, Brandon Davis, Davis. Yep. Raibu Katayama, Raibu. Mikey Horns. Cicerelli. Dude. Mons um, Roycelin. Mons. There's a lot of a good crew. heads. Yeah, we got a good squad. Torstein. I mean, come on. Torstein. OG. Up on He's yeah. OG rock star. I feel like the logos got updated or something a little yeah, bit. Yeah, uh, got uh, bought by a new company, bought by Pepsi. Changed it all Pepsi up. Pepsi came and crept in. Yeah. I'm more of a Coke product guy, but. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got, stays true to this stuff. I got to be honest. You know, I go to a spot and they only sell Pepsi. I'm out. Really? really? Yeah. Damn. It's not a deal breaker for me. No, I'll hit the not. Pepsi too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's going on these days? You're living at Ben's house, right? B. Ferg just bought a new cribby. Yeah, Ben Does actually. Your brother like, charge rent. Yeah, he charged the first time I've ever really had to pay rent. Sucks really? ass. Really? Yeah. Still your brother? He's like yeah. extra charging you extra. Dude, we we argue and then he's just like, motherfucker, pay me rent. I'm like, all right, I can't actually say anything. <laughs> That's nothing like, you can say. Yeah, looks dope though. No, his house is actually way too nice for us. Big white walls. We're just it was way too dirty all the time. Way too hard to clean, but. No, it's You're not fresh. allowed to touch the walls, basically. Dude, yeah. If you like, I like you like trip and kind of touch the wall, and he sees that, he looks at you, kind of flexes <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you see the vein pop out of the little vein popping. Oh yeah, he gets the forehead vein going too sometimes. Yeah, he'll oh, get the forehead I've vein. I've seen that. That long curly hair doesn't cover that red neck <laughs> on that boy. <laughs> Does he uh, make you put a deposit down too? Me? Yeah, at the house. No. Okay, it's just no. rent. I'm just paying rent. No. No first and so last. No like contract did, first did, and last. Did, I was wondering if he did a background check. <laughs> yeah, first. background check. Like oh yeah, full background <laughs> check. 
Barely got accepted. <laughs> barely got in. Barely got in. There's mom, a waiting list. Mom and dad had to plead for me. Yeah, someone had like, to vouch. They wanted me out of the house anyway. That was like yeah. perfect. Yeah. Let's talk sauna. Yeah, sauna's He's nice. Got a sauna? How often you hit that thing? I honestly like don't even fuck with it that much. Yeah, I like sauna. I like it, but I'm kind. I can only last like ten minutes. I'm not good at the sauna. I mean, I don't like that heat, heat, heat. Yeah, what's up? You can't take the heat. You can't take the get heat. Get out the kitchen. Yeah, get out the kitchen. I'll tell you what. I'm not even in the kitchen. <laughs> <brother>. <laughs> When we're uh, the only time I like the sauna is when we had to jump in that cold water, and then you're like, gotta have the sauna. But I can't just do sauna. We do have this little like uh, horse trough thing. F- fill it up with the hose; it like freezes overnight. Cold so plunge. it is a cold plunge. And you I have, have a cold plunge. Next I've to hit that sauna. once with it, and that's nice. I'll do the sauna, and I like to like. I've only had that been in the house for so long, so it's been winter. So you just get out for like a minute and you cool off, and then you just get back in. Get back in. So it's there. basically mm-hmm. B Ferg's wellness retreat is where you live. Yeah. B for his wellness retreat is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Rent's not cheap. Yeah, Rent's you, not cheap. Your brother was saying that you uh, are kind of not that great in the sauna. He's like, you can only last 10 minutes. I don't know what his deal is. Yeah, not that guy. Three big, minutes in, I'm just dripping. Big sweater. <laughs> wet, yeah, like wet hair already. <laughs> big no sweater. Hey, man. So you're, how's it feel to be paying his mortgage? That feels, feels great. Feels no. great. <laughs> no, it is. Up. It he, is actually he's like. It. Yeah, it's epic living with. I mean, I obviously want to live with him. And then, you're like, gonna pay rent either way, right? Gonna pay rent unless either you're way. buying a crib. So might as well help yeah. him with his. Might as well help him with his. We fucking we board. We just leave together. Like it's perfect. And you guys are out of town oh, guys, all the time. I bet. I heard there's been some partying happening there. Oh yeah, we've been having. Some, well, we got it. Like we were in it for like literally a month right before like Christmas and New Year's. So we had a New Year's bash. It was good. Broke it in a little bit. Any uh, breaking in the walls? Any like losing like of bodily functions, yeah, like, like shitting themselves or urinating? We've had a couple pissing scenarios. Somebody peed in a closet or something? Shout out Dylan Collins. <laughs> Spilling Collins spilled on our couch a little bit one night. peed on a couch? Yeah. And then uh, we've had uh, another one, nice little bedroom piss in Ben's room, which was sick. Right in Ben's room. <laughs> yeah. Someone crept in there. Peed. Someone crept in there. <laughs> Allegedly, we should say. Yeah. Allegedly. Legal, There's nothing like purposes. the sleepwalking pisser, man. Oh, yeah. No, but it's good. We literally have, like, the sickest group of friends at home. We got a roommate there, Max Trombley's. He holds it down. You guys are all out of town. We're out of town. He just holds the fort down. I bet he's just chilling. Hopefully he's got a couple ladies over there. Taking care of business. (laughs) All right, buds. We've been going for a minute. You know what it's time for? Yeah. Game that video part. Name That Video Part is presented by Woodward. Woodward Park City is about 15 minutes from Salt Lake, just two miles past Parley Summit. They're open 365 days a year with twilight lift access for skiing or snowboarding. And for this winter, Woodward Park City added 20% more terrain park features. Stony Buds, a.k.a. Yon Bud. Yon Bud. Woodward Park City is Utah's ultimate training facility with trampolines, foam pits, and airbags with the best coaching staff in the biz all designed for progression. It's also one of Salt Lake City's only indoor heated concrete skate parks. Love that we can shred and skate year-round. Drop in for a session or a lesson any day of the week, Yon Bud. <laughs> access to Woodward Park City is available through daily tickets with full-day lift access starting at only $40. It's just a good place to go have fun with your friends. Simple as that. I love the Peace Park section. You can get a little transition going. And then they got like a little three pack Shakur. They got a two pack of jumps. Uh, all good progression from like beginner all the way up to just chucking roast. They also mix it up. So you go there one week, you might be surprised a couple weeks later because it looks a little different. And that's kind of cool. Keep it fresh. Mm-hmm. You get good. You can learn how to ride like uh, G Ferg over here. It's going to take me a lot more than a park like that to learn how to drive <laughs> <laughs> ride like him. But <laughs> but I love the place. All right. How's, how's your confidence level? Zero through 10 for uh, NTVP. Pretty low, like a one. I don't know. A one? Yeah. You know, we went easy on him. We went easy on him. Dude, I bet I blow this still. I think you're going to like the first one. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, I know this shit. (laughs) Colby Raha, let's go. (coughs) Real Moto. He's your boy on the star. So he knows uh, Moto stuff. 
Yeah, we got that. We got Raha vlogs down for sure. Yeah, right. on the YouTube page. He's a big. Ra- I guess would you hang out with Kobe Raha and you're you're a fan now. You're a boy. He's your boy too. Yeah, like talk to him for like maybe a second. Now I'm just <laughs> and you guys are dogs. Now I'm just hyped. Yeah. He's basically Team Rockstar Husqvarna through and through. Mm-hmm. We watch this. Supercross. That's like whoever's on Rockstar Husqvarna is his guy. Mookie right now. Yeah. Mookie. Yeah, Mookie's a ripper. Okay, that was easy. I knew that you'd get that one. So I gave you a little bit of a harder one. So you won name that video part. You get your prize pack. It's a win. This is a Perfect. bonus. This is a bonus round. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, this is Austin and Kurt, right? Yes, it is. That's good. Yes, uh, it is. What is the video? It's not people. It's a... Uh, it's technically a people. It's a video. people video, but I can't. I can't remember which one. I mean, you did pretty well. All right, I'm gonna give you. What is this word? Down. Oh yeah, down with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little charades. We've actually just been watching good. this one, so that was that was nice. Good charades going on. Kurt right. Kurt Cizik has the best D in that video right there. The KOB, King of Bachelor, according to you. Uh, you got yourself a bombhole prize pack filled with bombhole merch. It's a Yeti carry-all. I think we got some uh, hats. Tukes is the Canadians like Tukes. to call it. Epic. Uh, Appreciate it. And then you got some hoodies in there, uh, stickers, all kinds of good stuff. Appreciate it. It's all available at bombhole.com. Yes, bombhole.com. Now, uh, beautiful. part two, name that video part. This is for the listeners. So don't don't guess this one, Gabe. If you know what it is. Comment on the photo of Gabe on Instagram when his episode comes out. Buds, what do you get? You're going to get yourself a prize pack in the form of a sticker pack. All right, here we go. All right. Thank you guys for playing Name That Video Part. All right, let's keep things moving. Let's stay on target snowboarding wise. So you filmed Joy and Everybody Everybody. Kids kind of coming into his own. I mean, that's two videos in a season. That's big. Yeah. Kids kids dropping A grades. And then uh next year was Halcyon. Uh yeah. Halcyon. Sage hooked it up for sure. All right, I think it's good time then to talk about natural selection. Natty Select. Kid put on a show. How was your experience? getting back in the contest scene i mean it was good it was sick to like do it and experience it i uh i wish i did better i like wish i made it further i wanted to like beat sage and then beat ben like was what i wanted to do but like shit you know goes how whatever shit happens and then like i did after after the day i did lose to sage i did just get the same fucking feeling i had at any contest I've ever been at, where you just like show up and you do your thing, and then like get judged by some old head sitting in a booth, and then you're just not hyped, you know, and you like don't even care, and you're like, why not even come? Like I just like start going down this rabbit hole, but like mental, mental, hole. yeah. But then, so I like I don't know, maybe if the outcome was different, I'd be more hyped on it. But I came away not super stoked on it, you know. And then you're just out, and then I like don't even get a chance. Like, for me, it's kind of fucked up because I did get the second highest score of the day, like, rode well, and then you don't even get a chance to go to the next ones. You're like, mm-hmm. all right, fuck this. Like, whack. Yeah, you put on on the head-to-head, and then you you called out Sage, to right, in the in the raffle to pick who you want, right? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, I, put, I picked Sage because he is, like, he's the only person I really know that well. Well, when I had to go, it, everyone kind of already went, and I had to go against, like, it's either like go against, pick to go against Torstein, pick to go against Longo, pick to go against Sage, or an open box where I would have been against Ben or uh, Sweet. So n- no good options. I mean, the whole then, contest is not really. Yeah, good you're options. never gonna get a good option. Yeah. But like, Sage is definitely the one I know the best. I talk the most shit to, or just like have fun with it. So definitely went went with that route. I think the K two people were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> they were like, "But then Why it did, did kind of, but then it did kind of guarantee." Like I was like, "Dude, one's getting through, whatever." Yeah, guaranteed spot. Yeah, um, but no, it was yeah. Who whatever. did they want you to pick? Oh I, no, I don't know. Probably no one. But you know who I put my money on? Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> he won money. Yeah, I think yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, no. I mean, it was dope. We did like we had a sick 
I thought it was dope. The first day of that contest you was wrote awesome so for well, me. man. Yeah, we had like you killed it. One one run, he won one run. We had like a little battle. It was sick. Well, so you had the second highest contest score of the day, run of the day, and he had the first. And he had the first. So it he just beat me. it had you been in a different scenario. Yeah, and then you do start thinking about that. You're like, fuck, I should have probably had picked I someone picked else. anyone else. But like, yeah, but then maybe things would have went different. So yeah, you can't you can't pull to that. Yeah. It's just the way it is. I, and I, homie's mad fucking good. He's gonna put down like. You know he's gonna put down. It yeah. was it was so fun because you had all a bend rooting for Gabe, yeah. and then you had all like the Salt Lake homies rooting for Colonel Cotts, and it was just like this kind of like great internet chirping. There was the meme of Calvin and Hobbes of Hobbes or Calvin pissing on the state of Bend. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> this the city. Of oh yeah, we got ruined by the memes for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the meme squad so, is putting you down. I got a question from Curtis Cizik. Epic. And it's not a guest question. It's just a question he asked me on the phone. Tell him, he said, tell him to ask, the, like, ask him this. Why did he do a backflip instead of a back seven? I mean, everyone's just doing a back seven out there. It's like, that's the same shit with just like, okay, you rotate more and you're just going to get scored better. I could have done a sketchy ass back seven and maybe land and then maybe you do better. I should have done a double backflip. That's what I wish I did. But I didn't. like Because then never... that would have put the nail in the coffin run two, right? Yeah, well, run two, I fell on yep. it anyway. And then he kind of like, it sucks when you go first because you got to land. The whole time I was going first, I'm like, all right, if I don't just stay on my feet, he's just going to cruise down the hill, you know? So then that last run, when it's tiebreaker, I had to go first. I'm getting to the last hit. You're like... I probably should have thrown something, but I was like, fuck, I need to stay on my feet or he's just going to cruise. Like, I already did a front five, was riding switch a little bit, laced the other shit, felt smooth. I was like, just get to the bottom. I didn't even think about that. They're, people don't just cruise, though, do they? Dude, yeah, people 100% cruise. Yeah. If the homie in front of them falls, they then they're like, oh, anything. I'll do a front three, back three, and just ride down. Like, Oh, man. Yeah, if you stay on your feet, you're going to win. Like, That's Prady kind of got screwed on some shit like that because his homie fell, and I think he tried to stay on his feet, and he did, and it was a dope run, but then they didn't give it to him. But he still lost? Yeah, Yeah. same thing. uh, That was like Danny and Dustin Craven had a similar scenario, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, what about the fact that, you know, I think Nick brought this up, but like when you go to a contest like that, you're talking about being bummed, but you're you're signing up to be judged, right? You're signing up to be judged for sure. And it is like... That's just how the outcome was, so you take what you do from it, you know? But uh, that whole contest, and then you're bummed. I was just bummed after because, like, I wanted to drop in on that second day because it's just fire publicity. If you drop in, if you're in the event that day, you're getting coverage, and, like, that's the main thing. Like, if you're riding in it, you can show people. It's just fire publicity. So that, like, rode and then wasn't in it, and then that whole other, like, next couple days in Jackson, I was just, like, bummed because it was, like, fuck, I wish I could at least just drop in or something. Like, I don't know. Because it's like, why are you there? Then you're just there chilling. I'll say from a spectator standpoint, though, the head-to-head, you and Sage, we were on our feet. Mm -hmm. We were yelling. You guys put on a great show. Uh, Now, curious, because you're in the the world of, like, non-competitive snowboarders competing. Video park guys are diving back into the contest world. Uh, Are the other dudes... Do, do the video part guys, they start getting jockey up there or does it stay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm coming from just like doing events my whole life and like seeing how people act up there, like how serious they take it. And then you got fucking like, I don't know, Rasmans up there asking a million questions. You're like, dude, it doesn't even matter. You just snowboard down the hill. Like, okay, there's just like nerdy. I, I don't know. There's just like people that are just like way too. Like, I don't know, take it way too serious. And it's just like, at the end of the day, you're boarding. You're riding down a piece of wood on snow. like So it doesn't really matter, you know? But there's just like, it's funny to me. The funniest thing is Jared. Because I grew up just like, Jared was always free rider. I'm doing contests. And I think he was always kind of giving me a little bit of shit at contests. And now I'm at a contest with him kind of, he's like the jockeyest yeah, guy it. there. <laughs> He's like banging on the walls before he drops in and shit. I'm just like, oh my God, dude. Like, because the chillest people are the people that don't do shit. They go up there, they act normal. Arthur, smoke a cig at the top. Like at pipe contest, he's just like smoking a cig at the top, not saying anything. And then he would just like boss up. And you're like, that is the dopest shit. 
But the, that it's all funny. Like I don't know. <laughs> and he grew up doing contests too. But yeah, that is. Yeah. I, I like that. That's interesting. Sometimes yeah. this is what I think. I got a theory that like the people that are anti-jock that are like the people that call a lot of other people jocks, they're deep down the biggest mm. jocks. I that is that. probably true. But it's just like I don't know. It's like anything. You just want to. The sickest thing you could do up there is like, imagine this. You're at the top of a pipe run. Camera gets on you. Yeah, probably just smoking a little cig or something. Kick it out and just drop in. Don't say anything. Bust down. Win. Maybe like throw some middle fingers up or something. <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't know. Like, you actually want to be sick as fuck. Mm. You didn't do any like uh, meditation and go like uh, like squat by a tree and just like visualize your run. I could never do that. I always had to be kind of like having fun, joking. If I could like make the homie who's gonna like who's gonna drop you laugh, I thought that was kind of sick. Mm. If you could like bullshit with him and like he's cracking a smile and laughing and you're laughing, that was like my thing. Yeah, when you're when you're loose, you're riding well. Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. vibe. If also if you don't have butterflies, you're not gonna land is a thing for me. Really? And I've talked to Ben about this. Wow, I like this. Elaborate. If you have if you're going into a run and you're nervous and you have butterflies, I feel like you always kind of lace. But if you're coming in confident, like not even nervous, which I've had this, and then you just fall, you're like, what the fuck? But and I think you need the butterflies. The butterflies like set you off, put you on another another level, huh? Like you're yeah. like thinking about stuff, you're scared, you're nervous. Well, you know you're nervous, and maybe it's just like a, you know you're about to like go to war or Kill something. It. Little like instinct thing. Wow. Hmm. Do you think Natty Select's a good event for snowboarding? I don't know. Harsh subject for me. Are you going to go back if invited? Depends. Go, it depends on where I'm at at that time. I don't know. Right now, I'm like just not that hyped on it. but Because I think it's a lot of people just like not snowboarding for themselves. But at the same time, it is like I did already try to do it. And you can't knock that. And it's like it's great publicity if you're in that thing. You're like getting coverage. And it's good for your career and everything. So it's like hard. Why do you say harsh, harsh topic? Just because I don't really know where I'm at with it, you know, having a hard time fucking with it and then don't know if I'm not fucking with it at all. It's just like it's up in the air for me. That's OK. That's a good place to be. Yeah. You know, you don't know where you stand. But yeah. from a spectator standpoint, it's great. Yeah, it's I, we love it. Head to head as much as you got kind of dickered. It's it's pretty fun to watch. It can easily go the other way with the Dickerson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's just like I did the contest shit and then you leave it and try to do some stuff you want to do and then. You kind of just feel like you're back at the same shit, mm. trying to re- prove yourself to random. You're like, people. I was over. I'm done with this. Why am I back here? Yeah, exactly. And some of those guys were never in, so it's a different thing for them. Yeah, it's a whole different thing. So, how's I Man as a, as a TM? You got on DC, <laughs> Team Manager of the Year, right there. Really? Oh yeah, crushing. Packages are showing up on time. Packages get there on time. Checks are no, showing up when they need to. I mean, it's honestly just the shit having. Like, I've had a bunch of TMs in my life, and you have a dude you can just, like, call out of the blue, FaceTime, whatever, and he's just, like, a friend is really nice. Does he give you advice? I mean, kind of, but not really. (laughs) (laughs) And he rips when you're out shredding. Didn't he get a shot the other day? Isn't that what I heard? Oh, yeah, he's fire. You go bored with your TM, and he's, like, actually, he's probably just going to put up more than you are. It's kind of (laughs) sick. He's got more landings. You know, we always ask, like, best style of all time. I was thinking about that when we were watching him hit the double line. Like, dude, I man style is fucking good. Yeah, he's fucking really good. And he's he's really steezy. His only problem is, like, before he's hitting shit, he's, I think, like, a hundred questions are going through his brain. And he's, like, he's, <laughs> what he's, he say to the he's top also of voicing it, too. You're, like, dude, you need to just, like, chill and board. Like, you're fine. <laughs> like, he's, like, I think this turn, this speed, like, he's just questioning everything. At this trick, I don't know. You're, like, dude, you're chilling. He's an office dog, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a keyboard I mean, cowboy now. He's kind of an, kind of an office dog. Yeah, he an office drives dog, up he there probably a, a little bit. Yeah, I think he drives to the skate park more than he goes to the office. <laughs> Frontside flips are looking good. All right, uh, we got a guest question from none other than Ika Backstrom. Here we go. Hey, Gabe. It's your friend, Ika. I'm kind of curious what your um, day-to-day routine looks like in the middle of the summer. Can you walk us through it? Hope you guys are having a good time. Love you, man. Peace. Damn, that's a hard-hitting one. <laughs> gonna make me look bad <laughs> love you too Ika um day to day I mean come on it's open you can do anything with your day in the summer 
no plans. Probably wake up, not eat breakfast. Kind not of not a breakfast guy. Not what, a, what time? Not we, what time we waking guy. up? Yeah, Let's just summer, back it up. Summer what time? time? Wake up nine ten. I'm not crazy at sleeping in unless it's like a big night. But usually get up pretty like normal eight even. But uh, depends on where you are. I mean, if you're in Oregon. If you're in Bend, you're probably chilling. With the homies going to the river, really not doing that much, getting some beers. I don't know, biking around town's awesome. Maybe it's a little later in the summer. You're going to hood, chilling, camping. I don't know. If you're at Iman's house, you're like probably skating. I like like surfing, but I'm not that good at it, so I like kind of <laughs> hate it at the same time. But I don't know. Tough one. Depends on where you are. But not a whole lot going on. A pretty open schedule. <laughs> Just like let me let me check no, my uh, calendar. What do I got yeah. going on for the next three months? Nothing. Oh, that's I, weird. See, not a single thing on the calendar. I joke with Jared about this a lot. It's like, dude, I'm way too busy. Way too much going on. Can't make it. Definitely not punching a time card anywhere. <laughs> yeah, not punching in a time card anywhere. I asked him yesterday before we did the, the show. I'm like, what, what are you doing today? And he's like, man, uh, just watched 21 Jump Street. <laughs> Gonna get into some Netflix. We talking the new Twenty One Jump Street, the newer ones? Yeah, newer one. I mean, this was after Blake got the cover, so we were kind of oh, okay recovering from. We a were big just like, yeah. let's pop in Twenty One Jump Street. Blake got the cover. Oh yeah, next day. Just ma- imagine that. Just midweek, full day Netflix. Like <laughs> respect, dude. <laughs> I gotta wake up and do Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big day. I got a big day. Uh, walk down to OTC, get some <laughs> breakfast, walk back, watch some Netflix. <laughs> Maybe order in some food these days because you can dash? do that. You, you don't go even dash. gotta leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> big day, big day. DoorDash is hitting today. Mm-hmm. Netflix and Dash. Yeah, a lot of stuff going. On. Maybe get his oil changed. Who knows? Yeah. Probably not. But all right, dope, good stuff. Uh, all right, talking about DC, we happen to have another guest question, and he just walked in. I think he's in the lobby. Ah, okay, here it is. What up, Bombhole? This is Jared Elston. Quick question for Gabe Ferguson. Uh, wanted to ask about the DC house in Mammoth last year, and certain things got broken and burned. Just wanted to see what the story was there. <laughs> Good question. Well, if you were in broken Mammoth... and burned. <laughs> if you were in Mammoth at that time, you would know the DC house is where it was kind of all happening. Um, we had a good crew. Krugs was out there. Eek, um, Sam Sosnowski, big shout out. He was an MVP out there. Um, myself, Jared, Mason Jar, Max Warbs, but uh, Brady Lamb. We, uh, we got up to no good, though. We burnt some boots. I think Blum threw Brady's boots in the fire one night. Oh, Ika was ripping shirts off of Sam and tossing them in the fire. I think we burnt all of his DC t-shirts because he moved because he left and went to Quicksilver. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so we, you had to drive home with no shirt, right? Yeah, Ika. Yeah, he has no shirts. Ika would just be like, "Take the fucking shirt off. Come here." <laughs> like, and then wrestle him and get the shirt and throw it in the fire. He wrestled it off of him. Yeah, we broke a guitar. Never done that before. <laughs> Whose guitar? Broke Denver Orr's guitar. No. Sorry, Denver. R.I.P. the guitar. It was a nice time, though. It was good. That's what I... You know what makes me happy, buds? It's like, you know, these these kids, it's like just... You're just like, yes. Doing it right. You're like, yes, it's still happening. They're burning, They're still burning just teas and guitars. Destroying shit for no reason. I heard Iman uh, took a bit of a tumble into the coffee table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so someone, someone's smoking inside. Maybe I don't even know who it was. Of the B&B. Two people are smoking inside of the B&B. Dude, the B&B was getting destroyed. We got the dirt bike in there, revving it up for a second. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> but you guys someone... aren't going to be renting from them anytime soon. Huh? Or you guys DC won't be. No charges. Oh, it was really? clean. Yeah, no charges. Five-star review. Five-star review. <laughs> Five-star review. And we're talking about burning, <laughs> breaking guitars, burning shirts, yeah. revving, revving a uh, dirt bike. And smoking oh, yeah. inside. Smoking. I mean, okay. <laughs> that's like every rule you can possibly break. Okay, so someone's smoking inside. Allegedly. And, allegedly. And then he could just comes down like, whoa, 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 whoa. No smoking inside. No smoking inside. And then just eats shit on the coffee table. <laughs> There's like a bunch of glasses and everything. Breaks just it goes off. goes everywhere. <laughs> coffee table was fine, but shit was just flying. It was oh, great. Man. Heard some broken glasses, maybe, potentially. <laughs> yeah. Who brought in the bike, I guess, is alleged? 
It's a legend. Either Mason Jar or Jared. Which one? Which bike? Are we talking to the Suzuki? Was it was it Baden's? Who's, whose bike was it? Um, Slump? maybe Jared. Were they like doing Dude, tire burnouts? What are we talking? Up and down the stairs? Like what was going on? I can't even think about what dirt bike it was. Someone. All right. While we're on party stories, you went to Hawaii to the Vulcan thing too. I didn't get to go. Oh, I didn't, didn't go. Oh, didn't show for some face. Reason I thought you were there. Big miss out. Should have showed face. <laughs> I was hoping Kinda that clowning you could, for that one. You could uh, tell us the story behind Tommy Gesme falling in the bush. No, nah, I wish, but oh, the no, bush, wasn't there. The bush footage we that's there from the, Hawaii. Yeah. The bush debacle. Mm-hmm. Now, how's the snoring been lately? <laughs> Uh, is it, I think it's actually kind of getting a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie. You know, that's what people say when they you know, want it to be getting better, but then well, other people are like, "Nah, it's not the case." Well, it's not. It's definitely not the case. Still snoring, but yeah. I've been like focusing on trying to like on sense, like been burning different shit and trying to breathe through my nose a lot. Trying to, I don't want to be on the sleep apnea machine when I'm older. I don't want to be like, yeah, I don't want to be like in my fifties on the big machine. I want to be able to breathe through the nose. You know what Sexton does. He uh, tapes his mouth shut. I oh, actually yeah. like need to try this. Mickle put me on some shit where you sleep with your fist right here. So you kind of just like keep your mouth closed. Kind of works. No way. But Prati was pissed at me last year. I had to move the bed out of the room. <laughs> was joking that the sawmill starts at 11. <laughs> <laughs> so like there's definitely a little bit of a problem. I right? always people ask me what, what my snoring status is and. I'll be like, yeah, I think it's getting better. And then I'll notice, like, my wife slept on the couch the other night. It's like, yeah. why are you sleeping on the couch? Because I can't sleep in there. Yeah, exactly. If I'm on my back, I'm bad. Mouth, yeah. mouth wide open, just. And I figure yeah. it's getting better because I didn't wake up because she's usually waking me up, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. It's not getting better. Mm. You know what I'll tell you this? We just did a, I got, I don't know if I even got invited. I kind of invited myself. Brown Cinema Trip, we went down and got a and b Oh, you invited yourself? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, what are you guys doing? I think I hit a blum. He's like, and he just sent me the address. Oh, so you just so, showed up. So it's kind of like, you <laughs> That's know. That's tight, dude. Blum, Blum's calling shots for Brown Cinema. Yeah. And you know what I miss so much? Like, one of the greatest things in the world is just being in the B&B. It's with pretty the, dope. With the boys. With the boys. And just the banter. The We're playing. He brought his Xbox. Oh, yeah. You got to bring the games. Dude. B&Bs are dope. You're fucked up to watch a motocross race, right? <laughs> You're into, like jumping off of the couch and yelling and shit. Dude, my boy Cade Clayson, I play fantasy moto. I do Pulp MX Fantasy and Rocky Mountain Fantasy. So I got two fantasy teams going. So I got a lot on the line when we're watching Supercross. <laughs> so you just getting hyped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blum and I were, were actually tied for points in that one, and Cade Clayson took it into the barriers and uh, over the tough blocks. It was a tough. It was a tough race. It's a good time. Good time of year right now. You got the NFL. Got the motocross. A lot going on. A lot going on. Uh, Keegan kind of uh, took you took you to work on the in FIFA. I saw that was. Oh yeah, I get destroyed in FIFA. FIFA's not my thing. Big two K guy, NBA or Madden. Mm-hmm. But FIFA, I always get destroyed. Jared's a straight wizard. He always play. <laughs> I play wizard. as Argentina, and he goes Portland Timbers, and he beats me like eight zip. He's nice with it. Yeah, he's nice with the sticks. I'll tell you, I went uh, Bruins versus Colorado Avalanche versus Baden in. Uh, uh, NHL 22. Bruins or Zavalanche? And just let me tell you something. The Big Bad Bears absolutely annihilated. Really? The, yeah. Wow. The Avalanche was not good. Not a good look for him. Chell's a tough one. It's moving fast. Yeah. Chell's, <laughs> Chell's getting a lot of time with the sticks with Chell. Mm-hmm. The B is a good life. So let's talk Brown Cinema. What's B&B the deal with it? life. Dude, Brown Cinema. It's going to be epic. I mean, all the, all the homies just. I don't know. We're crewing up. Been filming. Filmed a little last year. Filming mainly this year. Butters is the shit. Oh, is last? Is it like a two year thing? It's been kind of a two year. I only did one trip for like a week last year, but trying to just put the whole season into this year. And who's the roster? Yeah, we got uh, Nick Baden, Jared Elston, Sam Taxwood, Parker Zoom, Blake Paul. Um, um, Reed's got clips. Co cards in. Dude, there's actually. I a saw lot a Kale Zima heads. clip. Kale's got clips. Grandy's got a clip. I got a clip. <laughs> I man. Uh, I man's going full part. He's going for Ender. Yeah, <laughs> Blum's with us. Don't let anyone shit. in this thing, huh? Oh yeah, you just got to give Butters the cash, and you're in. And you're Big in. Big air. Pay. Is pay, Chris gonna have to buy in? Pay Butters, and maybe you can film some What's, clips. How did they? Is it Brown Eye Cinema? Like how did they get the name? <laughs> Brown Eye Cinema. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have no nice clue. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nobody I, knows. I actually have no clue. We have to get to the bottom because of this. Because of that Innsbruck story <laughs> when you shit the bed? Yeah. I think you have to ask either Butters, Keegan Blum, or Harrison. They know or some shit. I don't know. It's a good chance it's brown ice anyway. Brown ice. Blum's still out there. We could actually... We could. Hey, Blum! Get in here! <laughs> All right, Blum. Get in the mic here with Gabe. We had a question. We want to know... Blum, for the listeners, is drinking a Twisted Tea. Respect. Shout out to Suzuki. Excellent. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, we want to know why is it called Brown Cinema? You got to say right here. Is it Brown, oh, you don't know the brown Eye you don't Cinema? Know. You don't know? <laughs> Comes from Keegan. Comes, okay, speak into the mic. He wants to phone call a friend. Him and, call him and come back to us. Yeah, phone, phone a friend. friend. All right, we'll, we'll get back to that. This is a phone a friend. Uh, what, yeah. what is it? <laughs> to be a millionaire? Yeah, or whatever? Who wants to be a millionaire? Or something I'd like, like to that. phone a friend. <laughs> you have that option. Yeah, two-year project. So so it's a chill vibe film for Brown Cinema. Walk but us, this walk is the us second through, year, though. Walk, walk us through the vibe of film for Brown. All right. Uh, you set the alarm for like six or seven. Might get out, might get out of bed at eight. Oh, we got it. I'm here with Grendy's, Eastone, and Gabe. And we wanted to know the story of why Brown Cinema is called Brown Cinema. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess it was just like, uh, it's kind of like a combination of the, the whole winking thing and then, uh, you know, all the colors being mixed together turning to brown uh it's kind of like a puddle of mud i guess i don't know you, you never remember it as much as i do I, it's all kind of vague but perfect that's perfect that is perfect that is perfect thank you keegan <laughs> <laughs> it's a puddle of mud Talk to you soon. All right, we got yeah. to the bottom of that and that's pretty much correct that then was, i remember when he started it He's saying, like, brown is just for everybody. We're all super different, and everything together makes brown. So it's just a mixing pot, a melting pot of all of our friends, and we make a puddle of mud. All right, puddle of mud. Great band as well. Epic. I don't know if I've ever listened to Puddle of Mud. Oh. Dude, Blum just smacked his head on the lights. Face into the lights. <laughs> it's fr- for the listeners, it's Friday. It's almost the freaking Wiccan, so he's having a twisted tea. We're going to watch he's Supercross tomorrow. He's twisted on the tea. I mean, I was kind of right. You know, like you eat a bunch of different foods. They all pool together and make that perfect brown. It's a brown cinema puddle of, puddle of poop. Puddle, puddle of mud. mud. Mud pie. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what you eat and what color it is. That shit changes color sometimes. Actually, yeah, it depends. You can <laughs> get those green wild ones. <laughs> Maybe like a sick dog, kind of like or a you, or yellowish. You had the you had like that, that beet salad. Oh <laughs> yeah, like what is going on, man? <laughs> the first time it ever happens, you think you're about to die or something. I don't fuck with beets. <laughs> this kid's a bit. He's big on the club sandwich, though. Let me tell you. Yeah, I hit a club sandwich. Why not? <laughs> Uh, fun fact, when I was in there ordering the club sandwich, the chick had never heard of a club sandwich. What? And it turned into this huge debate between these four ladies. Usually it's just like turkey club, like bacon and turkey. Well, that's, she had this debate, like, what do we put on it? What's a club sandwich? Mm. And and they're like, nope, that's the SKS and that, on their menu. And it was this huge debate on what meats to put on. They asked me. And I'm just like, dude, a club sandwich. I don't know what's on a club sandwich. See, just make a club is, sandwich. That's just some weird-ass Salt Lake shit right there. I guess. Yeah. The youth don't know what the club sandwich is. So they, what? what is a club sandwich, officially? I was thinking, like, turkey club. You I know, think like, that's right, yeah. Uh, I think that's, like, turkey bacon. Maybe Cali style is, like, turkey bacon avocado or some shit. Yeah, the Cali, you're right. Throw the avocado, it Throw becomes Cali style. Yeah. Love it. All right, I got a question. Who's your favorite jibber? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I got to think about this shit. Favorite jibber. Uh, Noah Peterson. Great answer. Good answer. I went, mm-hmm. went to hit an air horn, but it's the wrong button. I got a Patreon question to follow that up. Yeah. This is from Flame Tech. Um, what is the most underrated trick? The hot sauce. Um, most underrated trick? For just anything? As, as you perceive that question, I, I would imagine if you're out shredding. Most underrated trick. I don't know. Front one. Throw it at that. 
What and grab? Follow up. No grab. No grab. No grab. Front one. Follow up. Would you rather catch fat air and that's P fat, or get fresh duff? Who's that from? Uh, flame tech. Uh, fat air. Thanks, flame tech. Where'd the nickname Fat Gabe come with a PH? Uh, New Zealand trip. A lot of spites. You know that? You mm. know what spites are? They're just beers there. <laughs> just like a brand of beer. <laughs> so you're getting bloated. You're, you're getting yeah, spited. Yeah, we're just getting really bloated, yeah. Uh, had a dope-ass house with, like, Nick, Red, Malachi, Ben. Just fucking chilling, having a good time. Kids looking yeah, bloated. You're f- feeling super bloated. <laughs> feeling you super bloated. Uh, like spray painted the side of the jump, just fat with pH, and then it kind of Because you were so bloated. <laughs> Yeah, just Damn. mad loaded. <laughs> Gained straight 15 on that trip. The old uh, freshman 15 on that New Zealand trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Kids knows how to hit a good bloat. We got any more Patreons? We got, probably. I might have might have gone there. With, oh, I have one that we didn't, I should have asked earlier. So we're going to circle back to it. This is from Frank Wang. Can you talk on how Bachelor and the Dirksen Derby influenced your career? And what tips you can provide to win the Derby? Because we didn't really talk Derby, and we should have. Um, tips you can do to win the Derby? Dude, I have no clue. Have ask, you ever won? Ask Nils Mindig. Yeah. <laughs> have I'm you sorry. ever won the Derby? No, I got oh, a second, so no and then I got third this year. But That's pretty good. Kids on the podium. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a podium. My tip, what you want to know my actual routine, routine, what I did this year? Yeah, that's the question. You just go no practice, and None. you just drink some beers, and then you also you got to blaze before you run. And then, tip. And yeah, those good. are good tips. And uh, yeah, I don't know how it would have influenced your career or not, but nah, I don't know. Uh, Dirksen's always been the shit. We didn't get to do the Dirksen Derby for a long time because we were always at Do Tour. It was uh-huh. always at the same time. But when I was young, I did it once. Beat Ben, got all hyped, and it was <laughs> awesome. But I don't know. Anytime yeah. you could beat your brother, I bet back then it was a pretty sweet. Oh yeah, sweet scenario. Anytime you beat the older bro, it's nice. Yeah. All right, we got a guest question from Nick Baden, aka Fado. Here we go. Yo, what's up, guys? I hope you're having a good show. I'm excited to listen. One of the best ever on the mic. Uh, Hope you guys have a great chat. My question for Gabe today is uh, since you were riding so much when you were younger and just like every day snowboarding so much to now being on the snowmobile and building jumps and whatnot, do you think you are getting any better, or uh, do you think you've reached your max? Uh, I'm excited to hear the, the uh, episode, guys. Peace. Yo, I actually have no clue. That's Dude, you're way too life. young to regress. Um, 23. I would hope <laughs> I'm not. Peaked? I hope I'm <laughs> not done, regressing. <laughs> Do spend a lot of time on the snowmobile and like not snowboarding though. But I uh, every year for me has been getting like more fun. And I think just, like, experiment with different shit. So I don't think regressing at all. Just learn how to ride different shit. Um, I don't know, though. It is hard, like, when you are sledding so much, you're, like, not boarding that much. Pick and, like, when you skills. are doing contests, you're just, like, boarding so much and riding a bunch of, like, dope jumps or, I don't know, a half pipe or something. So you are just getting really good really fast. But I think it's different. Like, you learn how to... Right, you like learn shit throughout the year, and you learn how to ride stuff better. Like my first year doing backcountry stuff, I didn't know how to ride anything, and like I think I am getting better still. I would hope. Yeah, getting better at riding natural terrain. Are you landing more? Landing more ish. I don't know. Every jump is different. You can know? you eye up terrain better? I, mean, I think I can eye smarter up smarter up out there. I think I can eye up hits and terrain a little better for sure. I'm still definitely building some rogue hits for myself all the time, but I, heard I think that's kind of how it is. I heard you were really thankful for uh, Ika for all of his insight on the last jump you built. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all Ika's insight. Um, no. The last jump I built was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you, but that's just how it goes. I don't know. You think it's going to be sick, and then it's always What, it was like funky. a solo pat-down scenario or something? It was a pinball alley jump. Right? Oh. Is it pinball alley? No. Uh, the one, the double line yeah. one? No, no, the one, ab- the one above that, in the like up the gully. Didn't you guys build that? Oh, uh, no, that was him and Nick. Oh, that was him and Nick. Okay. Mm-hmm. He said you were giving him shit because he didn't, like, he's the vet, but he didn't offer a lot of uh, insight, insight for you. For you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, no, he's the fucking funniest because, I'm like I was saying, he's just, like, questioning everything. He's like, is the speed going to be good? Am I going <laughs> to land? What trick should I do? Dude, I don't know about this turn. You're like, dude, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> just hit it. He's been on the, and in then the he hits in it Cali. And he just does, like, the like, bestie, you know. 
he's got steam. Can we talk about uh, Bob Plum's showing on the snowmobile out there this week? Oh yeah, <laughs> what, 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 what do you do? <laughs> Dude, he actually wasn't bad. He's getting he's he's not terrible. He made it. He never got stuck super bad. Does he have a sled? <laughs> yeah, he's got a sled camo wrap on it. Pretty. Oh badass. wow, camo yeah. wrap. Oh yeah. <laughs> He gets out there. <laughs> Somebody told me that he got stuck on like a field, basically, and was like, "I don't like." They got his sled turned around. He's like, "I don't know if I can get out of here." <laughs> and he's in a field. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, he that just, happens to everyone. He pins it and just. <laughs> <laughs> what I think we should do is take like the the worst snowmobilers we've ever seen and set up like a snow cross race with all of the snow, like Bob Plum. And they should do it like when we do our vintage one, and you have to be on a sled from like twenty five yeah. years ago. Because that was a whole other ball game back then. Blake's kind of shitty. Be proddy? Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Kids. You're going shitty with him. Well, he's not good with the sled. Proddy's not going to like that. I mean, he can get there, but he's kind of <laughs> he sketchy, I there. feel like. I don't know. Ben said I was the worst at sledding in the group. I'm like, I'm not that bad. Come on. <laughs> he's not that bad. I went sled, but he's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, who's getting stuck the most? You know who's nice is uh, is Jared's brother. Yeah, Jonah Elson. Actual drone footage. Really? Straight beast. Yeah, he's a beast. beast right, let's, let's get into hot takes. He hit Ika's double line jump after. On the sled? And cleared the knuckle, like hit landed where the knuckle is. So he jumped the first step down? Didn't jump the first one, but Skipped hit the, the hit first, the jumped the one. second. When? Uh, like one of our last days out there was insane. After it was already like paved? Yeah, after it was paved, he found, he like just, just went to where like Ika was going, just like to the right. Holy shit. <laughs> it was insane. That stuff blows my mind. You should have seen these guys were hitting this jump and it was. It was so shaded and dark that I could see my headlight in the reflection of the snow <laughs> really? during the day. Yeah, brown cinema. We hit shit in the dark. <laughs> we don't like any well, light. Because it was so flat light or? Just early season, yeah. dark, you know, like March, yeah. it would have had good light. Yeah, but, you got know. you. It's like 4.30, Yeah, the jump never o'clock. really got light, but <laughs> it was really dark when we were actually hitting it. Wow. And these guys are wearing like welding goggles, like black lenses. <laughs> welding goggles. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk about Palisades. One iconic destination, two mountains, now connected by the base-to-base gondola. We got 44 lifts, eight mountain peaks, and 6,000 acres of legendary terrain set in beautiful Lake Tahoe. Welcome to Palisades. Iconic since the beginning, the mountain playground inspires progression and creates world-class athletes. Legendary riders have created countless video parts within this resort. Riders like Noah Selaznick. Jeremy Jones, Chris Roach, and many more. The Spring Park is the spot for sunny laps overlooking Lake Tahoe. Palisades Tahoe has been open to July 4th in past years, and this year the snow is stacking up. It's where dreams start and memories are made. Discover for yourself what legendary looks like Palisades Tahoe. All right, we're going to get into hot takes. First question we always ask, the GOAT. And or MJ, Michael Jordan, both male and female, of snowboarding, as it pertains to you, who do you got? As it pertains to me? Yeah, like your goat. Who's your goat? My goat's probably Lynn. Jamie Lynn? Yeah. Look how he just throws Lynn out there. I never heard him called Lynn yeah, before. Yeah, like they're tight, I guess. Yeah, it's so tight. <laughs> him and Lynn. <laughs> yeah, his, friend, his really close friend, his Lynn. really close my, buddy, Lynn. Just my close-ass <laughs> homie, Lynn. I've never heard anyone call no, him that. Probably really him. Like that. Almost, almost family. Yeah. Way he lives life. It's kind of fucking epic. Um, female? It's hard. There's the boys a lot are of, restless out there. There's <laughs> a lot of fucking good ones out there. Um, uh, probably Barrett. I don't know. If I had to guess. Or throw one out. Proper. Barrett Christie, great answer. Mm-hmm. Is snowboarding an art or a sport? Um, it is art, but it's also a whack ass sport. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great answer. Yeah. So it's both. It's a little bit of both, you know? Okay. Depends on how you board. Do you want to elaborate on that? Nah, let's keep it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Most underrated. Most underrated. Probably, I think Worm as well. Uh, Garrett Warnick's just the shit. And has put out a bunch of dope shit. And I feel like he just didn't get a... He had, like, two really heavy absinthe parts back-to-back. Mm-hmm. And then, like, didn't... Like, I think, like, Capita kind of fucked him over a little bit. I don't know. I don't know anything. But, I lo- like, I love Worm's boarding. And I feel like he deserves 
a shit ton more than what he gets. And not everyone gets the shine they could get, I guess, because their skills are there, but something else just doesn't click. And mm-hmm. I agree with Worm. That's great. He's answer. amazing. Mm-hmm. Steel or powder? Obviously powder. Just would, scared of the steel. I was hoping you were gonna throw. I want to. I'm gonna keep trying to He's get better at the steel. I like. I'm scared, but I like it. Like I'm not. I don't show dislike a, it. I'm just like show terrified. Show him a picture of some steel. Show him a screams. picture of a handrail, and he just yeah. starts cowering. He starts, it's, yeah, a straight, crying. it's a straight screams. nightmare yeah. that night. Wake Cold up, sweat in the morning. Piss my bed that <laughs> night. Yeah. He's working with a therapist. They're just holding up pictures <laughs> of handrails. We gotta get him in front of a therapist. Stat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Best style ever. Ah, uh, that's too hard. Um, best style ever. Uh, Vole. Most OG. Haven't got that one, and I like it. Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, best snowboard video ever made? Best snowboard video ever made? Uh, let's go lame or after lame. I don't know. Both of them. Okay, best board graphic ever? Best board graphic ever. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Terry, uh sword. Wood sword. Good He's choice. throwing out names of boards. I thought he was going to say K2 algorithm, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go K2 algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, pant over or under the high back? Uh, under high back. Nice. Respect. If you could go heli boarding with three people, good times. You could take anybody in the world. Who are you taking? I'd probably go uh, Ben, Ben Ferg, Zach Ferg, and then. Maybe say fuck the other seat, and it's just us three boys cruising, you know? That's tight. Leave yeah. one seat empty just so it's comfortable? Yeah, just so it's comfy in there. That's mm. tight, dude. Mm-hmm. I got to throw one in. Best um, method. Best method? I don't want to know. You've been around a lot of sick methods. We should ask that every sh- every show. That would be a good one, Adam. Like Mads Johnson or something? I don't know. I like OG. that. There's a lot of fucking good methods out there. All right, go to first try backcountry pat down trick. For what kind of jump? Like step a down. Step down. I don't know. I'd like to say something sick, like cap three, but probably like a back three or front three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Last question. Worst trend. Salt Lake City. <laughs> 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 that one's that one's easy. Wow, got us. Fucking great. You got us on that one. Yeah. That's a great answer. Ever since that Calvin and Hobbes pissing on Ben. He's yeah, he's been waiting for that. He's, he's getting that. his redemption. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's getting his redemption. It's going to suck when that lake dries up, you know? <laughs> Dude, we got so much <laughs> snow, man. That thing's going to go for another 20 years just off this winter alone. <laughs> All right, buds. I think it's time for you know what? A nice, fresh, cold one. We're going pub beer. Welcome to the Pub Beer Crap Shoot. Oh, wow. Pub Beer, I'll tell you what, this is a good, delicious beer. It's cheap, it's fun. I'm going to be drinking. It's Friday. Let's go. If you're thinking about uh, getting blacked out and uh, shitting yourself in a bed in Innsbruck, what are you going to choose, buds? <laughs> Definitely Pub Beer. Responsibly. Only Pub Beer. <laughs> Only Pub Beer. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to take a lot of them for that to happen, but let's go. Res- I mean, remember, responsibly. Yeah. Responsibly. Keyword. Okay, roll those dice. We'll tell you what you got to do. Seven. Seven. Okay. All right. Uh, who is one of your favorite people to party with? Love that question. Uh, favorite people to party with? I don't know. Mason Jar. Mason Jar. Kid goes, huh? Mason Jar is just the absolute shit. One of a kind. Love that. Life or death snowboarder. He's That's excited. how he rolls it? Yeah. Do you think it's sustainable is what I wonder? Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. Just riding at 120% at all times, landing flat. Oh, yeah. He's on a good one right now. Yeah, he's on a good one. All right. Okay, um, a couple things. We actually have a print of Gabe shot none other than by none other than Jan Bud. Yes, I shot that print. It's kind of a mystical photo. Yeah, mystical. It's uh, Grizzly Gold's Valley of the Cornices, actually. Valley of the Corn Eye. Valley, Valley of the Corn Eye. Where is it available, bud? It's available on bombhole.com. It's going to be signed by our boy over here. Are you down to sign? 
I nope. guess we should ask him no. first. Oh, you got to call Runky. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> not signing shit. Tell you what, we're going to force him to sign these. He's not uh, leaving until they're signed. How's Ryan Runky as your agent? It's fucking best. <laughs> 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 no, nah, he is the shit. You text him, he texts you back in 30 seconds. He's the shit. Yeah, he's one of those dudes he'll text you to be like, I'm going to have to text you in five minutes or oh, ten yeah. minutes or an hour, but he's just on point with it. He's on point. He's got your back. I love that guy. Love Runkle Stillskin. Uncle Runkle. Uncle Runkle. We're gonna do Is a quick a band called Runkle or something. No, maybe not. Not sure. We'll do a quick announcement though. Uh, we have Bombhole Cup coming up April first yes. and second at Brighton. Uh, day one is a banked slalom. It's all ability levels from beginner all the way to pro. We got two courses. We got vintage boards, boards over thirty years old. We got skiers on boards. If you're a skier, you can't ski, but you can snowboard. We got a class for you. That's uh, a whole class in its own, right? It's a class of its Love own. That. And then we're uh, we're gonna have the limo up there for day two, which is uh, the park showdown. We opened up the jump for mandatory cab nines in the pro class last year. It was really fun. So if you're interested in you're listening to the show and you want to come hang out uh, April 1st and 2nd at Brighton, it's going to be a really fun community event. So just kind of got to plug that right now. Should have sign-ups by the time this comes up. Ready and to go. once sign-ups get going, sign up quick because they filled up last year. Yep. We got Scott Blum in the lobby here. Uh, yeah, he, he actually won, uh, I think, Third or second in the vintage class of the bank slum. Yeah, he's good. He's coming here he's to tell. He has a message for us. Got a message, message from Keegan. Message from Keegan. After. Right. You got to talk directly into the mic. Talk directly, directly into, the, into, the, into mic. the mic. Hey, Gabe, how you doing? Scott we're going down. deeper. All right. So brown cinema has an adjective to be done in a way that evokes an emotional response, somewhat unconventional or unorthodox. Sketchily awesome. Japanese translation would be wabi sabi, meaning perfectly imperfect. So that's brown. Nice. You know, Caleb Flowers taught us about wabi sabi, so that's cool that he brings that up. Those are wise words. Yeah, that's good. I love that he took a couple minutes and, like, got his answer dialed and then hit you back. And then Blum actually hit his head again in the light on the way out, so he's two for two. (laughs) Two for two. We got to get back in here and see if he hit his head again. (laughs) That was dope. Thank you. Thank you, Bum. That twisted T sends him a certain way. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the brown cinema way right there. <laughs> couple, couple twisted T's smacking dome. Yeah, there's still only 5% too. A couple loose cannons <laughs> out there. Uh, All right. Only uh, way to keep it. couple things left here. Uh, On the docket. Setups. What are you running? Uh, K2 boards. Fire. Make great boards. What board specifically? I mainly run an Alchemist or a Broadcast. Parker Zoom's got this Broadcast right here. It's fire. Um, Is that Coolio on the graphic? I think uh, Col- <laughs> Colt Naven did that. <laughs> it does it's look so like Coolio. <laughs> did he have an album cover that looked like that? I swear he did. No clue. No clue, um, but that's dope. Yeah, no. It's like a little... Uh, it's like kind of the same as... Uh, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, Frank. Frank. Daniel Frank. It's like an OG You're Daniel right. Frank kind of throw yep. like thing for Parker. Yeah, it's a sick ass graphic. So you ride what size is it? This one's a fifty nine or at a fifty nine or a sixty directional camber boards. Um, DC boots, pretty stiff. Um, angles, angles. I go zero and fifteen on the front. Yeah, zero in the back. You know, width? straight zero. Yeah, and then twenty one width. What what size foot do you have? I got a size nine. Why? Why zero. camber? Can, uh, just because it's the shit. You can hold an edge and land better. I don't know. It's stiff. If you're like hitting some bigger jumps and you're landing hard, kind of a flat landing, they just like are magic for that. You know. What about so, bindings? Bindings. I uh, K two bindings. Usually the formula, but I think they got some new ones coming out that I'm excited to try. And yeah, I, I see. Know. I see your boot back there. You a boa guy? Yeah, I a boa guy. Double, Easy, double boa. Easiest way to get them on and off. I'm so un, like, never been picky about my gear at all. Just really run. Yeah, what it is. What outerwear? DC outerwear. Great stuff. Baggy. Let's Looks just good. keep going through the whole shmee. What's we got low go- res? Goggles. It's hats. Hats. Low res is hats. Ika Backstrom. Big shout oh, out. Oh, that's his company. His company. Yeah. Um, Love it. Crab grab. Go- or uh, gloves. Zero. Big uh, big shout out to Preston. Um, Jiro, yeah. Jiro's been with me. They, like, have had my back for a while. Love Jiro. Yeah. All right. You get dope-ass mountain biking gear. 
And Rockstar. And then Rockstar, yeah. The star new sheriff in Tokyo Tokyo Starfish, Mount Bachelor. Tactics. Tactics. Woo. Good stuff. No, his sponsor's better than him. Okay, and then uh, do you want to throw any thank yous? Yeah, I mean, thank you to my mom and dad, Jen and Brandon. Guys are the absolute shit, just like how much you put us on, me and Ben and Zach. Like, you, we love you so much. I want to thank both of my brothers, Ben and Zach. They're the shit. I wouldn't have any. They're my two best friends. So it's like epic to have brothers as best friends. And then just my close homies, everyone who supported me. I mean, couldn't be more grateful. Just want to board and have fun, and I'm hyped to keep doing it, you know? And hopefully you can keep doing it. But, yeah. All right. Um, what's next for uh, G Ferg? Dude, just literally trying to board as much as I can, um, and have a good time. Try not to take anything too serious and just like literally chill. I don't know, snowboard with people I want to snowboard with. Like my best friends are who I look up to the most, and it's like I just want to be around them. You take inspiration from any everyone you're around. You know, you like. Jared fucking his like hustle, his work ethic, Nick's ability to like not give a fuck and do what you want to do. Uh, ben, I take so much inspo from Ben. He's just got huge balls and sends it. He's fucking good at what he does. Red's an absolute freak, just technical and just a boss. Like, I just try to take inspiration from all my closest homies because they're all the shit, you know? And if you can surround yourself with those people, then I think you're doing good. Like I don't know. I'm having fun, and I love the people I'm around, and I'm just going to try to ride that wave and board as much as I can. Yeah, I mean, that's an all-star crew, dude. You just drop some science on us. You surround yourself with people like that. Oh, yeah, and if you're, you're like, everyone I'm around is dope, so you just take inspo. Like, you could just take a little inspo from everyone, and I think you're on some shit. Man, it's been a great podcast, Gabe. Yeah, been fun. Appreciate you guys. You guys are the <laughs> shit. Love that you came on here and ch- talked some shit with us, man. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we get uh, Grandies out for some more brown cinema Oh, dude, trips. once you get this guy one we shot, he get, can't stop. We got to get you out, too, Stone. We got to snap some photos. It's too late for me, man. Or to get a shot anyways, but photos, I'm down. No, yeah. you got to get this guy ripping some turns. It's magic. E-Stone is the first person I've ever seen light a new SIG from an old SIG. <laughs> Original <laughs> first person I've ever seen a OG chain smoke. Really? Gotta, gotta <laughs> love it. Yeah, that's good. Like in your young days of coming out, yeah. hanging out as you're like new on the scene. So you learn a couple that's things. You I, learn. I mean, come on, we were smoking you're the like, whole time. You're like, too, we're go, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These guys were the first people I see light a uh, old spliff off a new spliff. <laughs> 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 Literally chain smoking spliffs. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> oh, it's been a great episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to all of our Patreon members. We appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Over and out from the bomb hole. Peace. Yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah.